In Howard, Ohio, nothing is given, it's earned. Devotion, tradition, dedication. A town full of 242 blue collared, hard working bulldogs. A small pocket of Knox County whose hearts pump purple and white. Being the underdog isn't easy. However, the Bulldogs wear it like no other. Coming off of the best season since 2005, football isn't just a game in Howard. It's carrying the town on the front of it. Playoff seating is on the line in week three. Yes, week three. The madness continues in 2020. It's Northmore hosting Cardington next. Restore your engine to like-new performance. Stiction Eliminator cleans and protects all engines with a patented carbon nanolubricant. It removes the harmful burnt oil from inside your engine, reduces wear, and restores power. It's scientifically proven to protect up to 62% more than oil alone. We guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Available at these fine retailers. Real results powered by science. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com. We are uniting Park National's family banks under one name, to serve you more. This bank's about service, service to the community. I mean, your customers become your family, and by and large, you become their family. Customers do come in and they do feel like they're a part of our family, and they feel like they know us and we know them and we care. Park National, our family of banks, all together now. Restore your engine to like. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week number three of the 2020 high school football season from Northmore High School as the Northmore Golden Knights host the Cardington Pirates. I am Brian Harder along with Bruce Weirich. And, Bruce, uh, we mentioned in the open there, playoffs in week three. We're already starting to talk about playoffs because – this strange season is going to end after week six, so that means these regular season games are vital. The winner of this game will come out two and one. They will be in a better position when it comes to seeding, so this is a very important matchup here in week three. And one of the things you said there, Brian, is that it's a short season. They've only got six games. Most teams uh, only had one scrimmage. So right now their team's got to be peaking. 
you've had the first week, you had a few mistakes. You come to the next week, you clean up a little bit. Now, third week, you better be primed and ready to make a run for the rest of the season. Northmore dropped a tough one last week at East Knox, a game that you saw right here on OH Report. They gave up two late fourth-quarter touchdowns to come home with a 13 to nothing loss. Sophomore Max Lauer rushed for 80 yards on 15 carries. Most of those were in the second half. So if they are going to win here tonight in week one or week three, he has got to have an important game for the Golden Knights. We're going to see two contrasting offenses tonight. One's going to run the ball all over the place. And Northmore is very good at running the football. And then we're going to turn around and watch Cardington air it out. Air Corleone, here we go. They're going to throw the ball. Well, last ball game you told me, Brian, they threw it 48 times. Yeah, they lost a tough one last week as well, 30-22 to against Danville. Nate Hickman was 28 of 46 for 241 yards and two touchdowns. He did throw three interceptions. Cardington also racked up 125 yards in penalties, which didn't help their cause. Sophomore Ashton Plowman had an 82-yard kickoff return for a touchdown called back because of a penalty. He did take another kickoff return back 80 yards. That one counted. I'm going to go out on a limb. They're not going to kick to Ashton Plowman. No. Back in my days when I was a head coach in Ontario, we used to go to Cardington. And even then, they had the Plowman brothers. And I'll tell you, they had, we had trouble stopping them and see what Northmore can do with them. Tyler Rose has the ball teed up, and we're ready to go here from Northmore High School. Cardington won the opening coin toss. They deferred, so they are going to kick off to Northmore to start the ball game here tonight. Lauer, the sophomore, is standing at the 25-yard line, ready to receive this kick, along with C.J. Stoney, number 22. It's going to be an onside kick, and it's kicked to number 45, Hunter Troyer. He recovers for Northmore. The offensive starters for the Golden Knights, they're led by Marcus Cortez at quarterback. The sophomore, the fullback, Max Lauer, he is their big runner. The backs are Workman, Ramos, and Stoney. The tight end, Andrew Armrose. The tackles are Sanders and Michael Stuff. The center, Austin Hammond. And the guards, Gavin Whited and Jordan Welch. First and 10 for Northmore, throwed 47 yard line. Cortez out of the shotgun. He's going to run it to the left side, a hole across the 50-yard line, and he's going to go into the end zone the first play of the game. 53 yards, and Northmore is on the board. Nice start. That was unreal. You know, one thing you got to do, Brian, is you got to thank that offensive line. They came out. They opened the scene. I don't think Cardington touched him all the way to the goal line. Yeah, you saw there on the replay, he had a very easy hole there on the left side. Had one defender to avoid there at the end, but he goes into the end zone, and just like that, and that is what Northmore needed. Last week against East Knox, they really struggled to move the football, and to come out on the first play of the game and go 53 yards, that has got to make their head coach, Scott Armrose, very happy. They're going to go for two, and that's Lauer, the sophomore, and he is going to be stopped short of getting into the end zone, so Northmore will have to settle for a six to nothing lead. The offensive starters for Cardington, they are led by junior quarterback Nate Hickman. The running back is Joe Denny. The receivers, Trey Breininger, he's a good one. Big 6-3 target. The other receivers, Brandon Petty, Gabe McConnell, and Zach Lester. The tackles are Colin McAvoy and Logan Friedley. The guards, Mike Blake and Mason Davis, and the center is Josh Baker. One of the things I got to say, I just hope Cardington can keep it together because usually early in a ball game when you score quick like that, you start to feel a little bit different inside of it and you start to slack off a little bit, and that allows Cardington to work their way back into the ball game. They have got a very young lineup, does Cardington, under the direction of first-year head coach Todd Breininger. He was an assistant. He was also or is also the softball coach at Cardington, and he has had a lot of success for the Lady Pirates, and they're hoping that can translate over into the football program. We've only had 12 seconds in the game, but it's, it's really been exciting so far. So Gavin Miller is going to kick off for Northmore. It's going to be a short kick. 
And the return up to about the 30-yard line. So Cardington will start first and 10 from their own 30. The defensive starters for Northmore. The defensive end being Andrew Armrose. He is joined by Hunter Troyer. Dustin Sanders, Gavin Whited are the tackles. The linebacker, Austin Hammond, had a nice game last week against East Knox. He's joined by Garrett Corwin, Max Lauer, and Nico Christo. In the defensive backfield, C.J. Stoney, Marcus Cortez, and Trenton Ramos. Already a new wrinkle here. They throw three receivers tight to the line of scrimmage on the right side, and they're going to run. First play of the ball game, Joe Denny, 19 carries on the season, but he cannot get around that right corner. Nice job by Cortez coming up, making the stop. Linebackers forced to play right out to him, and he made the play. Austin Hammond also there as well. A loss of two on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Northmore with an early 6 to nothing lead on a 53-yard touchdown run by Marcus Cortez to start the ball game. Hickman now out of the shotgun. Now Hickman's going to try to run around the left side. Gets up across the original line of scrimmage. He'll get about four yards. Hickman carries the ball a little bit out of that quarterback position. 20 carries on the season for 50 yards. It's kind of funny to watch what's happening. Last ball game, they threw the ball all over the place. Now they're trying to run on this defense. And it's a beautiful facility here at Northmore. We'll talk about that a little bit more here later. Third down and eight. Hickman again out of the gun. Again, they bunch those receivers on the right side. Hickman. Rolls to his right. He's got some time. He looks. It's caught. And a first down for Cardington up to the 45-yard line. First reception of the ball game for big Trey Brininger, a 6'3", 215-pound receiver. Coming into tonight, 20 receptions, 260 yards, and three touchdowns. He's the leading receiver for the Pirates. We're going to keep an eye on that secondary from Northmore, see how they're going to line up and stop this offense. First and 10 from the Pirate 46. The Pirates trying to respond from an early touchdown. A flag on the play, and this is what happened last week in their loss. 125 yards in penalties. And that might be you haven't had enough reps. You don't get used to that quarterback on this count. You're in a new formation, a bunched three receivers all bunched up. Early season jitters. Breininger comes wide to the near side. Now they bunch the three receivers on the left side, and he's going to pitch it. And Denny stuffed at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down and long. They're going to give him a yard up to about the 42, so that'll make it second and 14. Cardington's really working the outside run game. They've ran it uh, three times, and trying to find a weak spot on that Northmore defense attacking the corners. Brininger again comes wide to the right. Denny in the backfield along with Hickman. Hickman, plenty of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, steps up. Hits Zach Lester. Lester across midfield, still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 46-yard line. Nico Christo came over to finish the play, but that's going to be – he's going to be close to a first down. It's going to be third down and two as the – Cardington needs to get down to the – about the 44-yard line for a first down. One thing, that quarterback's way too much time in the backfield. He can stand back there, survey the field, and he picks his spot to throw the ball. Now they go with a double tight end set. And right up the middle goes Hickman, and he may have enough for the first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. Kind of a wildcat formation. We were talking before the game about the different offenses and formations that the game has really evolved over the years. And you made an interesting point, and we'll get to it on the next dead ball, but 
There, an effective use of the Wildcat and a first down for Cardington. Hickman splits the receiver to each side. Now Breidinger moves tight to the line of scrimmage. Hickman runs the option to the near side, pitches to Denny. Denny cuts back. No, that's not Denny. That's Aiden Plowman. Plowman, the brother of Ashton Plowman, and he's going to be close to a first down for Cardington. So you talked about how Let's see how they respond after the quick touchdown, and they've really showed some poise here on this first drive. And they are doing it. They're actually doing it with the run, and they're loosening up that defense, keeping them honest by throwing the ball a little bit. Aiden Plowman now in the backfield along with Nate Hickman. Plowman, the brother of Ashton Plowman. And there's Aiden with the ball. Stood up inside the 30-yard line at about the 28 after a pickup of about four. One thing a good run game will do for you, Brian, is open up those passing lanes. Those linebackers start thinking run, they're stepping up, and there's gonna be a zone behind the linebackers and the free safety where they're gonna throw the ball. Pickup of four by Plowman, so it's second down and six. They stay on the ground. Grabbed at the line of scrimmage by Gavin Whited. Ball on the ground, and Northmore with the turnover, and it's Whited who recovers and takes the ball down inside the 40. So, Cardington had three turnovers last week through the interception. Now, they have a fumble here on their first drive of the ball game. That kills momentum. And, you know, that's practice. Coaches practice stripping the ball. The, anytime, your, anytime your ball carrier gets bunched up and gets jammed up and he's standing there, you come in and strip the ball. And that's what he did. He came in, stripped the ball, and he had a nice return. The Northmore offense back to the line of scrimmage, first and 10 at the Cardington 40. Cortez out of the gun. They give it to the big sophomore. Lauer bounces to the outside. Flag comes in, Lauer down to the 30. Let's see if it stands. He was brought down by Brandon Petty. They threw the flag right where those linemen are, and it's probably a holding call. That is going to go against Northmore. Both teams 1-1 one and one heading into week three. Cardington with an extra KMAC game. So they are 1-1 one and one in the conference. Northmore was supposed to play Mount Gilead back in week one. But Mount Gilead had to bow out of that game. They are playing their first game tonight in week three. They had players testing positive for the coronavirus, so they had to opt out of their first two ball games. That penalty pen. penalty yeah. marches Northmore back to the 49-yard line. Cortez splits the receiver to each side. He fakes it to Lauer. Ball is on the ground, and I think Northmore – has it, so they cannot use the excuse of the ball being wet. Both teams just really kind of struggling here early, Bruce, to hold on to the ball. Yeah, it could be the jitters, trying something new. Northmore is actually going in the wrong direction, Brian. They need to get down to the Cardington 30 for a first down. Cortez is going to run. Still on his feet. He's wrapped up. Brandon Petty. Strung to play out. Gets over to about the 46-yard line of Cardington. Still well short of the first down. It'll be third and long. 6.22 to go in the opening quarter. Northmore with a 6 to nothing lead. Saints to a 53-yard touchdown run by Marcus Cortez on the first play of the ball game. That's the good news. The bad news, Northmore with a third down and 17. Cortez again out of the gun. Three receivers in the formation. Fakes it to Lauer. And it's almost picked off. Are they going to say, I think the pass was incomplete. It was intended for Trenton Ramos. And that's going to make it fourth down. And it's on the Cardington 47. Do you kick it here and try to bury them, or do you go for it here on fourth down? Uh, you got a long way to go. 
Northmore does not have the type of offense to pick up big chunks of yardage like this, so you better punt it, put them in the hole. So Corwin's going to be back in punt formation inside the 40. He'll kick it to Trey Brininger. Ball angle to the near side. That's Ashton Plowman. He is a dangerous returner. No, it's number nine, Zach Lester. And Lester up to the 25-yard line. And let's see what type of composure Cardington has. You know, they drove the ball down the field, did a great job. And then they got the ball stripped and went the other direction. Let's see what Cardington does here. This is going to be a big series for them. That was a nice stand by the Cardington defense. They've got six sophomores and a freshman on that defense for Cardington. And one of the things you got to you got to stop doing is shooting yourself in the foot. The holding penalty, a little fumble here, lost yardage. Northmore cannot overcome a lot of those penalties. Now they'll put two receivers to each side of a tight formation. That's Plowman taking the pitch on the near side. Another flag is down as Plowman is brought down at the 30. Making the play was Garrett Corwin, but let's see what the penalty is, and it looks like it's against Cardington. It's another holding penalty. That's two penalties for 15 yards in this game, and this one's not a good one. It's going to push you back farther. And that happened right smack in front of the official, Brian. It's kind of hard not to throw the flag on that one. Penalty pushes the ball all the way back to the Cardington 11. And again, look at their long yardage. 5.55 to go in the first quarter. Hickman out of the gun, rolls to his left. Now he's under pressure, and he's going to be dropped. A big defensive play by Gavin Whitehead. He they tried to throw the ball. They're going to say he grounded it, or are they going to give him an incomplete pass? I think they called him down. Once your quarterback is in the grasp and no forward motion, the official can call it, and I think that's what they did. They called it dead. Called so, him down. Ball now resting at the Cardington three. They need to get up to the 35 for first down. I don't think you have many plays in your playbook. Run the middle. Don't get a lot off that left side. As we said, Cardington under the direction of head coach Todd Brininger in his first season. They were 1-9 and nine a year ago, 1-6 and six in the KMAC. Their lone win was a 13-7 win over Fredericktown in week four. So that led to a change at the head coaching position. And Todd Brininger, who has been very successful as their softball coach, as a timeout has been called with 5.19 to go. In the opening quarter, Northmore with a 6 to nothing lead. Brian Harder, Bruce Weirich from Northmore High School. A perfect night for high school football. A little bit of a nip in the air. But what a facility. You got the turf here at Northmore. You got the Northmore offense putting early points on the board. But I'm really impressed with their defense right now. They stripped the ball, got it back for the offense in good field position. Right now they got Cardington backed up against the wall. And last week they played well. They're playing well this week. They could be the difference in the ball game. this defense. Well, last week the thing that they struggled with was just getting some offensive continuity going and getting points on the board. The defense played well enough until about the 344 mark of the ball game. They gave up those two quick touchdowns, but they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with East Knox at East Knox. Not an easy place to play. And you got to remember, they scored that first touchdown by throwing the ball on Northmore. The second touchdown came because Northmore went for it on fourth down, didn't make it, turned the ball over in a short field. So it was really a one-touchdown game. Third down and 30. Two receivers go wide to each side. Hickman back to throw. Lofts it right side looking for Breidinger, and it's caught. He's at the 40, and believe it or not, Trey Breidinger – with a first down on third and 30. That's what you do. You just throw it up to your big 6'3 target, and he hauls in 
a 34-yard reception. That's called all go. You put four receivers on the field, run them all up field, quarterback finds who's open and throws the ball to them. They spotted at the 43, so it's actually a 33-yard reception, but it's still a first down for Cardington. That was impressive, and it was a nice throw by Hickman. Denny up the middle, no gain. I really like Hickman. He just dropped back. He had all the confidence in the world that Brininger was going to make the play. And that's a read by the quarterback. When you send four receivers up the field, that quarterback looks at the free safety, see which side he's covering on, and you throw it the opposite direction. And the man was wide open. Brininger is going to come in tight to that right side. Ashton Plowman, the speedster, goes wide left. Hickman fakes the handoff. He's going to run it. And another flag comes flying in as Hickman is brought down at midfield. This one's coming back. That's in the neighborhood of a hold or an illegal block. Looks like a hold again. So Cardington just continues to shoot themselves in the foot. So instead of a second down and seven, it's going to be second down and about 19. The one thing about Cardington's offense is no matter what the down marker is, first and 20, second and 20, third or 30, they're always in their same offense. And all they're going to do, again, they split out their receivers, find the open receiver, and throw it to them. 4.14 to go, first quarter. Northmore with a 6-0 lead. Both teams looking for win number two. Hickman going to come back across the middle. He's got Brininger. It's caught at the 42. He was going to Trey Brininger all the way. He rolled to his left. Brininger cut across the middle, and it's another first down for Cardington. That was a well-executed play, a perfect play call. The quarterback rolls to his left, looks back on the receiver, runner in the post, wide open underneath the free safety. Nice play call, really nice play call. Cardington driving there at the 38-yard line of Northmore. Reidinger comes wide to the near side. Hickman again rolls to his left. This time he looks gets Lester a short gain to the 36. Zach Lester, 6'1", 220-pound senior. Cardington has thrown five passes. They've completed all five for 94 yards, Brian. Not a bad start. Lester coming into tonight, nine receptions, 86 yards. He really does spread the ball around. Brininger, the leading receiver with 20 catches, but Lester with nine, Gabe McConnell with six, and Plowman with five. And one of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier, no matter what the down and distance is, and I learned this when I was coaching at Ashley University, they're always in their offense. Always in their offense. Now they'll send trips to the right. Plowman comes wide to the left. Hickman. Got all kinds of time. And he's going to run out of bounds, throws it at about the 40-yard line. It'll be incomplete, second down and eight. And that was a nice decision by Hickman. Northmore with a nice job in coverage. He just threw it away, third down and eight. One of the hardest things to teach a high school quarterback, when you're in trouble, just throw the ball away. Because they always try to get that receiver downfield, and that's when they make a mistake and the ball is intercepted. Especially when you have a guy like Trey Brininger, sometimes you want to force the ball into him. They did a nice job in coverage of him and took him out of the play. Yep. Third down and seven as we approach the two-and-a-half-minute mark of the first quarter. That's Denny off the pitch, and he's going to be brought down from behind by guess who? Gavin Whited who has had a very busy first quarter. So it's fourth and eight. And again, Cardington's going to be in a situation. They don't have to change their offense. Some teams, when they run the ball a lot, when it's fourth and long, they have to go to a passing situation. Cardington is going to run their base offense, look for the big receiver being open, do what they always do. 
And Brininger, that big receiver, is going to come wide to the right side. Trips now to the left. Hickman looks to his left, comes back to the right side, looking for Brininger. And Brininger makes, no, he's incomplete. He's out of bounds. So the defense for Northmore holds, and they're going to get the ball back with 1.38 to go. And there was a collective sigh of relief on the home side of this stadium as that ball went up to the big, big receiver. And one thing you're starting to notice that Northmore had three defensive backs on him at that time. They're going to cover that guy wherever he goes on the field. They're going to put multiple people on him, keep him, try to take him out of the ball game. There's Marcus Cortez coming back onto the field. He has the lone touchdown of the ball game, a 53-yard run to start things off. Northmore is up 6-0, but they've only put 56 yards on the board. Cortez back to throw. Now he's going to run it, and he's going to be spun down at the 39-yard line, and Aiden Plowman came up to make the play. After a gain, forward progress up to the 39, a pickup of about four, second down and six. Now we're approaching one minute to go in the first quarter. And Northmore in no hurry to get this play off. There's 15 seconds to go on the play clock. Swing it out. Far side. Caught by Ramos. Turns up field. Has a first down. Flag come flying in as Ramos is knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. See if this is another penalty against Cardington. Looks like you're going to bring it back. It would erase a 20-yard reception by Ramos, and it's going to be a hold against Northmore. So that negates a big play by the Golden Knights. 44 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Northmore sends two receivers to the near side. Cortez is going to run, and he could not get away from Aiden Plowman. Plowman with a nice job of stopping Cortez from turning the corner, and he actually lost a couple of yards. It'll be third and nine. One of the things Northmore had trouble doing last week was throwing the ball, and we're seeing the same thing again. Can't get the ball upfield by the pass, so the defense just going to jump all over the run. There's 15 seconds to go in the quarter, and I don't think Northmore is even going to try to run a play here, or are they? No, they're not going to run a play. That's going to be it for the first quarter. Northmore with a 6 to nothing lead as we head to the second. You're watching High School Football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Customers do come in and they do feel like they're a part of our family and they feel like they know us and we know them and we care. Park National, our family of banks, all together now. It's scientifically proven to protect up to 62% more than oil alone. We guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Available at these fine retailers. Real results powered by science. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com.
Brian Harder, Bruce Weirich back here at Northmore High School. Tonight's high school football broadcast being brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Hot Shot Secret, Spherion Mid-Ohio, and Park National Bank. Northmore with a 6 to nothing lead as we start the second quarter. Ball thrown over the middle. It's incomplete. Cortez was trying to hit Trenton Ramos. And as we talked about last week with Northmore down at East Knox, they are not as comfortable throwing the football as Cardington is. And we talked about it early in the ball game. Northmore's going to run the ball. Cardington's going to throw it. Northmore has 58 yards rushing that first half. Cardington, 94 yards passing first quarter. So Garrett Corwin's going to go back and punt. He'll kick it. High snap. It's a high, short kick. This is not going to be returnable, and it's going to take a Northmore bounce, however, and roll down inside the 35 to about the 34. So that's where Cardington will take over, trailing 6 to nothing. Both of these head coaches here, Bruce, have something in common. They both inherited one and nine ball clubs. Scott Armrose took over the Golden Knights back in 2017. They were 1-9 and nine the year before that, and all he did was guide them to an 8-3 and three record in his first season. And Todd Brininger trying to, well, he's not going to play 11 games, but he's trying to turn the tide in Cardington. Tell you what, he's got a nice, young, talented roster here. Hickman out of the gun. Pitch it on the near side. That's Aiden Plowman. Plowman tripped up at the 40-yard line by Max Lauer. So a gain of about six. It'll be second and four. Cardington a little bit more balanced than I expected here in week three. I thought they'd come out and just throw the ball all over the place, but they've done a nice job of mixing the run and the pass. And when you run the ball, that forces your linebackers to defend the run. That opens up the passing game. And as we noticed, they've made some big plays throwing the ball. Which plays into what we were talking about before this ball game. You see all of these, and I don't want to use the word gimmicks, you see these different trends in football over the years, all these different passing formations. The bottom line is you have to be able to run the ball if you're going to be successful. Hickman on a broken play tries to turn the corner on the right side, and he's going to lose about three yards behind the 40-yard line. There you see a nice look at this new turf, the first season that it's being used here at Northmore. They've got the new turf. they got a new scoreboard. I'm going to put in a bid for a new press box. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. This is a big play for uh, Northmore. If their defense can hold up, they can get the ball back in good position. I can't complain. The folks here at Northmore have taken care of us tonight. Third down and five. Ball at the Cardington 40. Hickman slings it out. It's caught. That's going to be close to a first town. Zach Lester with a nice fingertip catch. And they're going to spot it just shy of the 45-yard line. And it's going to be third. No, it's going to be fourth and very short. And this is a tough call. Tough call. Do you punt it or do you go for it? Northmore's been playing good defense. Look for, I'd be looking for the fake. They go back into that wildcat four. And there's movement on the line. And they shoot themselves again with another penalty. Coach's nightmare. That is one of the biggest nightmares coaches have you have the perfect play called and somebody jumps offside well it makes this play call a whole lot easier Trenton Ramos is going to go back yeah. to receive the punt from inside the 30 yeah you're sitting at a fourth and one you think you can move it they get into that tight formation almost like a straight T, and they can get that one yard now they got to punt it because of a penalty Hickman is also the punter. It'll be a side-to-side -side kick. Ramos takes it at the 30, and he's got nowhere to go. He is swarmed under. But I tell you, it was good coverage by Cardington, and you have to have one very, very good athlete to field the ball with three guys breathing down your neck. Trenton Ramos, the junior, 5'9", 155 pounds. He's their primary kick and punt returner. 
A lot of times you'll get a player back there that just won't catch the ball when there's pressure in his face. And what happens? The ball takes that bounce and a roll and roll. Nice job by Northmore receiver there. So Cardington with the ball again, first and 10 at their own 30. Cortez gives it to the sophomore, and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Pushes forward for a couple. Big Max Lauer. It would be nice to see Northmore just control the ball and take it downfield, work in their run game. How much of how much of what they have been trying to do in the first quarter has been trying to catch Cardington off guard? You know they want to run the football with Max Lauer. And there's Lauer again. Big 230-pounder gets up across the 35 to the 37. He is a load to bring down. He had 80 yards last week against East Knox. Back in week one, he had 124 yards and two touchdowns. What and we've got an injured player on the field for Cardington. And I think it's Zach Lester, number nine. One of the things that you notice that early in the season, Max had a lot of yards. You know, he did well. Well, what happens is coaches will scout that. And as you look at that receiver or that back and he's running these yards, they start to play to stop him. So as the season goes on, the yards for that back is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. And as a defensive coach, you're going to sit there and say, hey, he's not going to get this yardage. We're going to do everything we can to stop him. We're going to force him to beat us with another player. Tonight's high school football broadcast is brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors. Hot Shots Secret, restore your engine to light new performance with Stinction Eliminator. It cleans and protects all engines with a patented carbon metal lubricant. They guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com slash TV. And also by Spherion Mid-Ohio, your connection to local jobs from light industrial to skilled professionals. Spherion has opportunities for everyone. Visit midohiojobs.net and let's get to work. Speaking of getting to work, Zach Lester back off the field and walking off under his own power. That's a good sign. So maybe either a cramp or he just got the wind knocked out of him. When you take a look at this Cardington offense and the Northmore offense, Northmore's doing what they expected them to do, run the ball. Cardington's throwing the ball. The big thing that's killing Cardington is their penalties. Every time they get a drive going, penalty. Third down and four, thanks to the carry by Lauer, and I would not be surprised to see him get the call again. Looks like there's movement on the line, but no flag. Keeper by Cortez, nothing going. It's fourth and two. Our third sponsor of the game tonight is Park National Bank. Richland Bank may be changing their name, but not their philosophy. They're still your hometown bank, supporting your hometown teams. Same bank, bigger promise. Fourth down and two for Northmore. Cortez up to the line of scrimmage. Oh. And there are flags, and let's see if Cardington may have done Northmore a favor here. That may have been the game plan for Northmore to try to draw the Pirates offside. Uh, it, it almost has to be, Brian. There's no way they're going to go for it on fourth and four at that position. And with the way Cardington's been penalized this game, it was a good shot. So the coach lines up, gets everybody ready, and lo and behold, you jump off sides. Yep. So that's going to send Garrett Corwin back to kick again. Trey Breidinger back to receive for Cardington. Breidinger will take it inside. The 35-yard line, a low kick. Again, going to take a Northmore roll down to about the 36-yard line, and that's where the Pirates will take over. Down 6 to nothing, 8.14 to go in the second quarter. I'm just sitting here waiting for Cardington to get the big play. You know, it seems like they keep doing it. They're moving the ball. They're doing a great thing. Then they hurt themselves. One of these times... Something's going to – everything's going to go right for them, and they're going to move that ball down the field and make the big play. Northmore's defense got to play up to it. Hickman out of the shotgun. That's Denny in the backfield with him. 
Hickman pitches to Denny on the right side. A flag comes flying in. Denny stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but I got a feeling this is going to be against Cardington again. I think it's a little push in the back. Looked like there was a little holding. Receiver turned back inside, grabbed that linebacker, wouldn't let him go. It's the frustration of having a young team. You've got a first-year coach. You know, he's going to come in and put his own wrinkles, his own style into this team, and there are going to be some growing pains, but this has the makeup and the they get things going. This is going to be a very good football team. Well, they have all the tools they need out there, all the tools. They got receivers. They got a quarterback. They got a back. They got a nice-looking offensive line. Two receivers to each side of the formation. Hickman out of the gun on first and long. Denny on a designed run. Tries the bounce to the outside. Breaks a couple tackles. And he's going to be stood up and brought down at the 45-yard line. Trenton Ramos was there to wrap him up. And tell you what, Denny almost got that yardage back as he gets all the way up. Now let's see where they spot the ball. About the 45-yard line. Looks like they're moving the sticks. Must have been a first down. Well, that's a very generous spot, giving him the 47-yard line. That's their sixth first down of the first half. Clock moving, 7.40 to go in the first half. That's the type of play that can motivate this offense and get them going. Hickman goes back to Denny, and this time Denny is swarmed under at the 45-yard line. They saw that one coming. That's that Northmore defense we've been waiting for. They're going to make the play. They're going to make the big play. Tell you what, this had the earmarks of being a high-scoring affair. The first play from scrimmage, a 53-yard touchdown run by Marcus Cortez, the quarterback for Northmore, and nothing from either team, at least getting into the end zone since. I don't think a team's been in the red zone yet. Second down and 12, ball resting at the Pirate 45. Hickman straight back to throw, swings it out. That's Denny. He's popped at the 48-yard line. Just across the original line of scrimmage, it'll be third and nine. That's the seventh pass completion for the Cardington quarterback. 103 yards on the night so far. Puts him in a third and nine situation with six minutes to go. Talk about putting your stamp on a program. I've got a stat for you after this play for Cardington. Third down and nine. Two receivers to each side. Hickman, the junior, out of the shotgun. Hickman under pressure. Looks left side. Has a receiver. It's going to be picked off. Back to make the play for Northmore was C.J. Stoney. He threw three picks last week. Hickman throws his first here in week three. And Northmore gets the ball back. The stat that I was going to give to you, they're really relying on Nate Hickman here in 2020. Last year as a sophomore, he threw for 908 yards and seven touchdowns. Now that was in 10 games. He's already thrown for 525 yards and six touchdowns in their first two games this season. Maturity. As he gets a little bit more experience on the field, he starts to time up with his receivers. It's just going to get better and better. Cortez and the Golden Knights offense back on the field. First and 10 at the 17. Cortez going to be wrapped up and thrown to the turf hard by Trey Breininger. 5.37 to go in the second quarter. And as a coach, you don't have to worry too much about that interception. That's just as good as a punt. Puts them back in the hole, Northmore. See if your defense can get a stop and get you the ball back. Cortez again out of the gun. That's Max Lauer in the backfield. Max has only touched the ball three times. Well, and we saw that last week at East Knox, and that changed dramatically in the second half. 
Cortez up to the 30. That's good enough for a Northmore first down. Denny came over along with Brininger to make the play. James will move with Northmore with a 6 to nothing lead, 5.07 to go in the second quarter. That's only their second first down for Northmore. they got to control the ball, work the clock, move it down the field. Lauer, left side, and maybe gets a yard to the 31. Then he's driven back by the right side of that Cardington defense led by Caden Beach. You keep watching Cardington's offense, and it's kind of an explosive. They'll throw for the big play now and then. The best way to keep that Cardington off the field is a good offense by Northmore. Lauer had 80 yards against East Knox. He had most of those in the second half. Cortez uncorks one, and that is taken away by Ramos. What a reception by Trenton Ramos. And don't look now, but Northmore is threatening with 4.16 to go in the second quarter. That was a nice throw by Cortez, and Ramos went up and stole the ball. Yeah, he was behind the defensive player, so when the ball was coming down, he went over his head, grabbed the ball. Excellent presence of mind to still get yards after the catch. Big play, Brian, big play. First and 10 at the Pirate 32. Now Lauer, right side, puts his shoulder down and gets to the 25. Flags come flying in. That may be a late hit. Lauer's helmet came off. And there may be some yardage after that play. There you see the big sophomore. Cardington's kind of losing it a little bit right now. Could be multiple penalties on this. Look like one during the play and one after the play. Lauer took the ball for about seven yards, but he had a feeling they're going to tack on more. Personal foul. Targeting. What targeting is when you hit a ball carrier above the shoulder with your helmet. It's like a helmet to helmet collision. That's called targeting. Don't know that I have seen that too often called in high school. It's, in my opinion, it's called way too much in college, but it's going to be an automatic first down for Northmore. So they're going to try to add to their 6 to nothing lead as we're just under four minutes to go in the half. And, and this penalty is going to move the ball inside the 10-yard line. And there's two penalties, you got to remember. One happened during the play, targeting. You're not allowed to lead with your helmet and hit another uh, ball carrier. Then the second one, something was said to the official after the play. And so that's why they marched off both penalties. Scott Armrose was satisfied with the explanation. It's first and goal at the six. Lauer out of the ball game. His shoulder, his helmet came off, so he's got to come out for a play. Corwin is in the backfield along with Cortez. They give it to Corwin, and he's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Lauer coming back in now. It'll be second and goal. You know, you're sitting at a second and goal. You're at the six-yard line. Northmore's got to come up with points here. If they don't come away with points, this is going to lift Cardington, lift their enthusiasm. Clock moving, 326 and counting here in the first half. Second and goal from the seven, a loss of one. On that play by Corwin. Going to swing it out left side. It's caught by Ramos. Gets away from a couple tacklers, but he's still going to only get down to the six-yard line. Kind of a dangerous pass by Cortez, but he does a nice job of getting it out to Ramos. And Ramos, unfortunately, because of a good close by Caden Beach, unable to get into the end zone. It's going to be that says second and goal, but I think it's third and goal. Let's 
stand corrected. It is, well, now they change it. It is third and goal. And a timeout is going to be taken with 3.11 to go in the first half. And now it's decision time for Cardington, or for Northmore, excuse me. Do you go with the big bruising back? Do you try to roll Cortez out? He's a quarterback that likes to run. Well, you got you got a couple options here. First of all, it's third down. Do you look at that as a running play, which means you've still got two plays to get eight yards and get in the end zone. And you, you're going to take your big back, try and get a yard, or run the quarterback, then see what happens on fourth down. And Cardington's thinking the same thing. They're going to try to run the ball, establish something. Northmore is a running team. And you got to think, this isn't do or die right here on third down. You'll still have fourth down. You want to protect the ball, get it as close to that goal line, give yourselves a shot on fourth down. Scott Armrose has really done a nice job since he has taken over this program back in 2017. All he's done is won 28 games. He's lost eight. And he's got a 6 to nothing lead here with 3-11 to go before halftime. Third and goal from the eight. Ramos comes wide to the near side out of your picture. Cortez gives it to Lauer. Lauer on the right side, cuts back, gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Northmore. An eight-yard touchdown run by the sophomore. And it sets up an opportunity here for Northmore to go for two and make it a 14 to nothing lead. I say you just give it to the big power back, and he's got nice footwork, too, for as big as he is. Nice cutback. And the coach did a great job. He split out his receivers. That moves a couple defensive players out of the ball game, and then you run your big guy up the middle, and boom. If he doesn't get in, you're still sitting at fourth down to give it another shot, but Northmore did a great job opening up the seam, getting up on the linebackers, and it takes more than one person to bring that back down. Max Lauer with his third rushing touchdown of the season. Cortez, after a low snap, he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And they unable to convert. Colin McAvoy came over and made the play. So Northmore has to settle for a 14 to nothing lead. No, it's 12 to nothing. They gave them the two-point conversion on the scoreboard. Now they take it off. 12 to nothing, 3.04 to go before halftime. They call that home field advantage when they put phantom points on the yeah, scoreboard. Yeah, I glance at the scoreboard like, well, wait a minute, he didn't get that. Then you got your down markers, and as a coach, you always think somebody's going to do something, and they shorten the chain when they have the ball, and then they open the chains up when you have the ball. The officials mark it wrong because the, you hired the officials. You always have that controversy in the back of your mind, but the bottom line is the players on the field are the ones that are going to win or lose it for you. And right now, Northmore looking to get their second win of 2020. And they've got a 12 to nothing lead. And the Northmore defense is doing just enough to keep Cardington out of the end zone. Between Cardington's penalties and the Northmore defense, Cardington's not moving the ball. Gavin Miller on to kick off for the Golden Knights. He's down. Yep. Which is a good thing because Ashton Plowman last week had two touchdown returns on kickoffs for Cardington. One of them was called back by a penalty, and you could tell he was ready to go when he went down and got the ball, but his knee scraped the turf, and Cardington's going to get it back trailing by two touchdowns with three minutes to go before halftime. Anytime you say that name Plowman, I get a chill down my back from the old days when I used to play Cardington from Ontario. The Plowman boys, I would spend all week defending them, and they still beat me. First and 10 at the Cardington 24. Hickman out of the gun. They're going to stay on the ground. That's Denny, and he has nowhere to go. He is brought down at the 25-yard line. Again, this Northmore defense is picking it up, Brian, when they need to. Gavin White it again with a big play here. Gain of one, second down and nine. Clock now moving, 240 and counting. Both teams 
with two timeouts before halftime. Brininger and Lester, the receivers on the right side out of your picture. And Hickman's going to roll to the right side. That's Lester, and he is dropped at the 29-yard line. Nico Christo over to make the play. Third down and five. Northmore right now, they just want to keep them out of the end zone. Going with the enthusiasm, the momentum. Now we're under two minutes to go. 152 and counting. Christo, plenty of time. It's caught by Breininger. Nice fingertip catch. A first down up to the 47-yard line. C.J. Stoney in on the play. Along with Austin Hammond for Northmore. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains with 1.41 to go before the intermission. There was a nice fingertip catch by Breininger. Yeah, I, that passing game can really do some damage if they can keep the penalties out. But it helps when you have a big target like that who's a senior and brings a lot of experience and leadership to that offensive side of the ball. Hickman swings it out again on cue. That's Brininger. Stopped after a short gain up to the 45. And a timeout is going to be taken by Cardington. They've got one more before halftime. Make sure to catch the Saturday Pigskin Show live tomorrow at 5 p.m. exclusively on the O-Rich Report Facebook and YouTube channels where Brian Skaronsky, Eric Will, and Kurt Conrad recap all the action from Friday night throughout North Central Ohio with top plays, outstanding performances, guest interviews, insider analysis, highlights, and more. The OH Report is also your new headquarters for live and free high school sports broadcasts in North Central Ohio, bringing fans live streams on our Facebook and YouTube channels for football, soccer, and volleyball throughout the fall. On Thursday nights this fall, get caught up on all the high school sports action going down to North Central Ohio on the Sports Mix with Brian Skaronsky, Travis Berardi, Jake Furr, and Jesse Ryder. Check it out every Thursday night on the OH Report Facebook and YouTube channels. Brian Harder, Bruce Wyrick, a good one here tonight in week three as Northmore with a 14 to nothing lead over Cardington, but you just get the sense, Bruce, that Cardington's a couple plays away from getting back in this ball game. Momentum, momentum. They're starting to get their rhythm down. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. A flag is down, and a false start. Again, this was a... This was a problem last week. Had 125 yards in penalties in their loss to Danville. And I just got done saying they had a rhythm going and then they shoot themselves in the foot. Hickman rolls to his right under pressure. That's almost picked off, or is it? They're going to call it an interception. It was Max Lauer stringing out on the far sideline. He comes up with a fingertip interception. I don't know if we've got a replay of this. Why? I didn't think he was in bounds. The official's right on the line there. He made the call. Looked like he got his foot in. One foot. This is not the NFL. You only need one toe in. What an athletic play by the sophomore. The second interception of the ball game for Hickman, and Northmore gets the ball back with 104 to go, up 12 to nothing, first and 10 at their own 45. If you got a trick play to get some yardage, now's the time to use it. Cortez pumps. Now he comes back right side. He's got a receiver, and that could be offensive pass interference. That was a push-off by Griffin Workman. Good call by the official. It has happened right in front of us, Brian. Kind of pushed on him. You can't be doing that. Clock stops with 58 seconds to go. Scott Armrose doesn't like the call, but they were trying to go for the home run there on first down, and instead they're going to be backed up. 
the one thing Northmore wants to do here is they just want to control the clock, 58 seconds. You don't want to give the ball to Cardington, and you, you want to go in at halftime up 12-zip. It's a great ball game. The last thing they want here is a turnover. Ball on the 30. It's first and 15 with 58 seconds to go before the intermission. You're going to tell your quarterback, take as much time as the officials will allow you. And they stay on the ground. They give it to the sophomore. Lauer is spun down at the 35. Ashton Plowman came up to make the play. And Northmore quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They have two timeouts and 39 seconds to go. Cortez, little screen pass to Lauer. Lauer, he's close to first down yardage, gets up across the 45. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains with 22 seconds to go. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be second down. And a timeout is going to be taken by Northmore. I was looking at the wrong yard marker. It's now third down and nine as they just got back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice little play. Give it to the big back. Let him pick the way through the field. Little screen play. It's a safe play. It's a safe play. You're not throwing to the outsides. If it was knocked down or tipped or intercepted, your linemen are going to be right there to pick it, to recover it. Northmore with one more timeout, 17 seconds to go. Really kind of surprises me that they're going to work the ball down the field. they got a long way to go. Last thing you want to do is give Cardington the ball back before half. You want to eat that clock up. A lot of confidence in this Northmore coaching staff and in their players. And that shows in their play. It shows in their play calling. Because if they get stopped here and don't get the first down, watch Cardington call timeout. Third and nine. Cortez looks over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. And he's lucky that didn't get picked off. So fourth down with 13 seconds to go in a punting situation. This is a no-brainer. You play field position here. Yeah, you punt the ball. You don't want to give him anything returnable, so you're not going to kick the number nine. You're going to kick the ball away from him. Zach Lester back to receive inside the 25-yard line. And Corwin will kick it from the Northmore 30. Corwin with a low kick. He's going to take a Northmore roll down towards the 20. And roll dead with about two seconds to go before halftime. And I would guess Cardington is just going to take a knee. Yeah, they got a long distance to go, but you, you never know. In high school ball, anything can happen, Brian. Anything can happen. I've seen them fake the knee, and then they turn around and throw it. When you have a receiver like number 11 out there, give them the opportunity. So Cardington's going to get one more play with two seconds to go. And if you look out there, defensive back number two, he's he's 15 yards deep already. I can see him getting deeper as the game goes, <laughs> or as they come out of the huddle. You do not want Cardington to get behind you. Well, it helps if they have a ball. Part of the coronavirus protocol, each team has to bring their own ball. And Hickman is going to run a play here. Eludes some pressure, and he was looking at Brininger, and he throws it away. And that is going to do it for the first half. Northmore with a 12 to nothing lead as we head to the intermission. You're watching High School Football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. <laughs>
We are uniting Park National's family banks under one name to serve you more. This bank's about service, service to the community. I mean, your customers become your family, and by and large, you become their family. Customers do come in and they do feel like they're a part of our family, and they feel like they know us and we know them and we care. Park National, our family of banks, all together now. Restore your engine to like new performance. Stiction Eliminator cleans and protects all engines with a patented carbon nano lubricant. It removes the harmful burnt oil from inside your engine, reduces wear, and restores power. It's scientifically proven to protect up to 62% more than oil alone. We guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Available at these fine retailers. Real results powered by science. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mammals and cats, whoever you are, we're glad that you found us right here on The Sports Mix. My name is Brian Skrotsky and I got a couple of friends with me again tonight. Travis Berardi and Jake Furr of the Mansfield News Journal are going to drop some knowledge on you right here and now. Let's get right to it, boys. Lots of big accomplishments here in our area over the last week since we all sat right where we are right now and talked about it approximately a week ago. Who are your big three for this week, Travis, who stood out to you the top performances? Well, no surprise, my number one is Owen Fisher. Come on. I mean, anybody who goes for over 400 yards rushing, six touchdowns on the ground and a punt return touchdown, I mean, he's probably up for state player of the week as well. Owen Should Fisher, be. my number one. Number two, I saw him personally calling the Ashland game on Friday. Ethan Hartley, he did it all. A touchdown passing, a touchdown receiving, and he had 15 carries for 162 yards and a touchdown. So he's my number two. And my number three, it's like a package deal like G-Man and Storm. Okay. Grant Barrett from Lucas and that Lucas offensive line. Ontario pretty much shuts down Owen Fisher. What was it? 64 yards rushing in their week one game. Barrett goes off 22 carries, 162 yards, four touchdowns, and the walk off with six seconds left. So there's my top three. You can't have one without the other. So no. I kind of like that you no, put that them together. That offensive line, there. you know, he can't run without the offensive line, and I know they've said that even at Lucas. They're a team, it's just not one individual. All right, what's Jake's take? Um, I, I'm going to go with some different sports here besides football. Um, my number one, is, it's pretty obvious, but number three, um, Shelby Grover from Lucas uh, during a game against Danville, a win. Uh, she had 13 points, 13 kills, 18 digs, and five aces. Um, so she's, she's kind of an all-around player. She's She's legit. She's a sophomore. She's going to be one of the best volleyball players that we've seen in this area, and we've had we've had some very very good ones. Um, by the end of her career, man, she's going to be she's going to be pretty special. Uh, then I have Sadie Smith from Shelby, who's a tennis player. Um, kind of a cool backstory on her. She didn't pick up a tennis racket until going into her freshman year, and she's a junior right now, um, and just picked up the game like crazy. And she's had some clutch wins as a number two singles. Um, against Marion Harding, she won a tiebreaker in a third set um, to, to give them the victory, a 3-2 victory over Marion Harding, which puts them in prime position to compete for an MOAC title. And then yesterday against Lima Central Catholic, she won a two-set marathon um, that gave them a, a win in that coaches tournament, that they, like a team state tournament. Um, so she's, she's the real deal too. I mean, it's, it's great to see those stories where kids are just trying new things and then they're excelling and, and succeeding and uh, you know, picking that sport up right off. But number one is obviously Owen Fisher. I mean, he, you know, 14 carries, 412 yards, seven total touchdowns. He had touchdown runs, I'll run them down. Touchdown runs of 54, 67, 16, 60, <laughs> 84, 67. So just on his touchdown runs alone, <laughs> right. 348 yards, which broke that school record um, just in those carries alone. Um, now he owns it all by himself, so. Then go ahead and add a 49-yard punt return on. Just, yeah, just why not? Just, why why not? not? Yeah. Just, just to top it all off. So. 
Definitely the icing on the cake for him yes, on that punt return touchdown. All right, uh, I got a couple of soccer players, both from the Madison Lady Rams, who over the weekend played in the Riverview Showcase. Nevaeh Lewis and Taylor Huff named co-MVPs for their performances. They each had a goal and a win over West uh, Jaga, so I got them on my list checking in at number three. At number two, uh, I didn't do a co, but maybe I should, Travis. I think you just inspired me. Uh, Grant Barrett, four touchdowns against an Ontario defense that was pretty stout, as you mentioned, in week one against Shelby, and then he just goes absolutely bananas, but I like the walk-off touchdown with just six seconds left. The guts to even make that call to not throw it when you're down there because I don't think they had any more timeouts. They, they had to get it in from uh, their eight-yard distance there. So Grant Barrett, big-time performer. And then at number one, like it's just too obvious. Like it, He probably is the state player of the week for has week to, two. Has to be I haven't seen too many other performances, period, in doing this job for 10-plus years that are like the one that Owen Fisher just had. So I think pretty unanimous number one in our area. Uh, the Whippet Nation, we got to call you out, Hungry Hounds. Where you at? Uh, on Friday Night Phenoms right now. I believe right now at this point he is number two is Owen Fisher behind a kid who only had two touchdowns. So you had five more. That's a whole fistful right here. Whippets Nation needs to step up. I'm going to be disappointed if Owen is not our Friday Night Phenom. I normally don't play favorites. It just seems like I need to say something at this uh, point in time. All right, what about the number one stunner for you guys from this last week? What really surprised you, either in a positive way or in a negative fashion? Um, I guess I'd have like an A and a B. On one side, the Lucas offensive line, just their running, rushing performance against two quality MOAC opponents, going down the clear fork and winning with their run game and then beating a really good Ontario squad with that run game, who, like we said, really shut down Shelby's run game in week one at... Uh, Shelby High School and on the other side well it was Ontario <laughs> just, okay. so I said that both of that was just it surprised me just how that game played out Jake my number one um, we're gonna stick with Ontario but it's gonna be with boys soccer um, earlier this week they just beat um, Lima Shawnee who is the number four ranked team in division two um, and they beat them two to nothing uh, Aiden Frankhouse and Taylor Daniels had a uh, had goals with uh, Logan Logan Cost and Brody Conley with the assist, and then um, Gage Weaver had seven seven saves in, in goal to, to preserve the shutout. So that's a huge win. I know they're you know they've only played three games. Uh, they're they're two and one. They lost to a really good Lexington team, but that win over Lima Shawnee is really going to propel them um, to a, to a really good season. And you know, like I said, three games they've only scored five goals, but they're all by five different players. So I mean that's. That alone tells you they have they have a lot of talent and I mean everybody's kind of equal playing field here so um, it'll be interesting to see what that can do when they come tournament time because I mean usually you only have maybe two or three guys you really have to focus on but Ontario's got five five different guys who have scored so far so um, it'll be a big one tonight over over at Ontario against Ashland that's going to be a fun one because those two teams are really good they are a really intriguing team that I'm sure that uh, Jesse Ryder is going to talk to me about here in just a moment but for me I was pretty stunned to say the least to see the Crestview Cougars in football go on the road at St. Paul who again we always know is going to be good but they got their doors blowed off 48 to 10 it was a running clock and I think just with all the talent on that Cougar team and all the expectations and as hyped up as they were all week last week I was just pretty stunned to say the least that they uh, laid a goose egg uh, they were in the game early and then man st. Paul I think maybe showed that they're they're the class of the Firelands conference yeah. yet again surprise surprise all right let's move on and talk a lot about a little bit of volleyball where we were diving into some of the schedules and looking at the results from around the area and of course we, we see them with our own eyeballs uh, MOAC is pretty loaded with some talent this year and then also some other teams around the peripheral uh, but let's start with that MOAC where I believe the Galleon Tigers got off to an 0-3 start to their season yeah. since they got into conference play five straight W's for them Jake the, the Tigers look unstoppable right now they're legit right now i mean they they front loaded their schedule just because you know they, they've been in that division two tournament and they or division three tournament and they want to make a longer run um you know so they front loaded their schedule obviously they they saw where they were where they were at what they needed to work on and then obviously they worked on that because they've got into moac play and just kind of kind of run run the show there so far but right behind them man is is, is an undefeated ontario team which that that showdowns tonight that's going to be a good one um, but yeah, Ontario's legit. 
Uh, I, I think uh, you know tonight will really tell where both of those teams are um, as far as when they're how they're going to move on for the rest of the season. But yeah, Galleon, Galleon is the real deal. Clear Fork started off so good sure. uh, to begin the season, and you know that was so promising because that program's been down a little bit. So, but I think they're on the rise. They got into the MOAC kind of. Kind of found like okay th this this is the level that we need to be at and i think they'll get there eventually um but yeah i mean i think it's going to be a it, it should be a you know a sprint to the finish line and i think it's going to be galleon uh pleasant and ontario who's going to kind of kind of win that race at the end yeah you mentioned the lady colts who started the season at three and oh since yeah. they've been into moac plays still looking for their first win uh three straight losses for them we'll see if they can write the ship and travis a team that you're about to see Tonight, mm -hmm. uh, the Northmore Lady Knights, uh, five and zero. Oh, we seen them earlier yep. in in the week. They're they're pretty good, man, and, and yeah, they, they got are. studs all all around. Yeah, we talked about it. They won a sectional championship last year, fell in the district semifinal. But the two games that I saw, they swept Mount Gilead, and then the game that we called, they swept East Knox. They're gonna have it's it's gonna be a fight tonight. They're taking on Cardington, who's five and two, two and one in the conference. Cardington finished in the top uh, top two, I believe, top two or three of the conference last year, bring back a lot. So this is going to be their first major test in conference. And I think by that, they're definitely going to be hands down one of the favorites in the conference. And the team that I'm going to be seeing tonight, the Crestview Cougars playing at home against South Central, a team that they should handle. And uh, I'm excited to see Kennedy Goon in action again, uh, one of the Max Preps uh, watch list players uh, preseason. So looking forward to seeing the Cougars. Uh, maybe try to get their season back on the proper trajectory where they also got smacked by St. Paul. Right. Uh, a three to nothing in a match that I think they were pumped up about, thinking, hey, we're gonna be in the conference race, and then maybe came back to earth, so we'll see if they can get healthy again tonight against South Central. All right, speaking of healthy, I see Jesse Ryder sitting over here in the soccer locker, so I'm gonna go, go join him, and then we'll bring it back here to the couch in just a few minutes. Let's send it over. Welcome inside of the soccer locker where it is time to get brighter with Ryder. That's right, Jesse Ryder is back and he has got some controversy to lay on you guys, but that's later. Uh, first, let's talk about just the big picture, what we've seen from area soccer, Jesse. Uh, the state rankings came out this week. We got quite a few squads on there. Yeah, I, I think the area is well represented. Uh, certainly, Ashton has both the boys and girls right around the top 15. Uh, Lexington boys are in there. Madison girls, number one. I mean, it's, it's hard to beat that. So I think there's a lot of good representation for the area. I think this upcoming week is going to really prove who belongs where and kind of how numbers will continue to rise or fall based on a lot of big games this upcoming week. All right, so speaking of rising and falling, let's just get right into mm. the top five, man. I'm excited for this. Let's begin with the girls where you had an honorable mention last week, and that team, I believe, is moving up a spot actually into the top five, right? So it, it, I, I've cheated a little bit. Okay, I have a, a, co, a co five. Okay. I have both the Crestview girls, we got to see them uh, play Loudonville, and you know, they can score some goals. They have some fun players, and they have the ability to score a lot of goals. So I have at number five both Crestview and Clear Fork. This is going to be a one week only special. Not so going to happen that. again. Okay. We're going to find out Clear Fork plays Mansfield Christian this weekend. We're going to cover that game. We're going to be there. We're excited. But we're going to see where do all these teams really kind of fit in together. So number five, Crestview Cougars. Only giving up two goals on the year, six and one right now. They're, they're playing some nice soccer. Clear Fork had their game canceled, so I can't take them out because they didn't do anything bad, but they didn't play a game, so it's, it's kind of you know, one of those tough scenarios. So number five, Crestview Cougars and the Clear Fork Colts. Number four, Mansfield Christian Flames. 4-0 right now. They're winning the games. They're supposed to be winning. They're playing well. Abby Little's doing a great job. They're, they're moving the ball. They're scoring the goals. Um, I, I think for us, the big question is going to be Saturday when they match up against a bigger school, a bigger team, uh, you know, a, a team that's been a kind of a powerhouse in the area. How will they fend against in, in that kind of competition? They've done well against some of the smaller schools. They've done well in their conference. But when you play kind of that, that bigger school, a traditional, just a, a powerhouse even, how are they going to match up? And so that's our game Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun to cover that game. Two great teams matching up against each other. Number four, one of the number fives. It's a one week only. We'll, we'll fix it next week. <laughs> but that, that's what we're looking at. Number three right now is Ontario. Ontario's an interesting team because they've got some great results, had a tough result over the weekend, lost six to two to a new Albany team who's, who's good, they're not great, but I think Ontario 
I think they're going to continue to get better. Right? It, it, the more they kind of figure out some of the, the key replacements from last year and, and how to use kind of their star players and get more touches on the ball, uh, we're going to see this Ontario team continue to get improve and get better and probably just continue climbing up a little bit. But I think when you have those young teams, every once in a while you have a game where you just kind of scratch your head out like, how did that happen? I think that that might be that New Albany game of like, you know, what you know, the, I would say if they play again, Ontario's probably got a good shot of winning, even though they gave up six goals, even though they lost by four. I think Ontario's not going to let that happen again. Number two, the Ashland Arrows. They are a terrific team. They play a difficult schedule and they're doing well. Uh, McKinley Mendenhall is, is a terrific player. Great game-winning goal against Lexington to beat them 1-0 in a big OCC matchup. Lots of good soccer in Ashland right now. I think the, the girls are playing well. They're, they're continuing to improve. I think the coaches, he's saying you know, they're not quite where they need to be yet, but they are making the right progress to get to where they need to be, and they're excited about that. A lot of good soccer from the Ashland girls team. Number one, Come number on. one in the state, gotta be number one for us, Madison Rams. They are, they're getting better and better and they were already really good. So this is a team that's gonna be a, a lot of fun to keep watching because they, they've not hit that peak moment yet where they're playing their best soccer. I think they're, they're trending in the right direction. They're a really good team. The exciting thing is they play the number two team in the state that's right. next Saturday. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But they, we're gonna find out when you start matching up with, with some of those type of opponents, how do you fare against you know, some of the best in the state? Right now, they are the best in Division Two, And so when you play the second best, we'll find out who, who really is the best. And that, that's, a, that's a fun matchup. So the girls, a little bit of change there. You know, Crestview creeping in a little bit. They have a good team. Uh, but I like, there, there's some quality area girls soccer teams in our area right now. So not a lot of change from last week's top five into this one, other than, you know, six teams, other than the five instead of the honorable sure, mention. Sure, yeah. So uh, obviously uh, Madison belongs at number one. I don't think you're going to get any qualms from anybody out there. Uh, they're fantastic. Taylor Huff, uh, arguably the best player in the state. And Absolutely. she's carrying them right now along with Nevaeh Lewis. And actually just a ton of talent. Shouldn't even say that. They have a lot more than just those two players. But those are the ones that get all the headlines because they're scoring the goals right now. Both of them have five. Uh, Kyla Spencer has been a really fun player for Ontario. Ten goals for her. That result, though, you're right. Losing by four goals is not something that I think that they are used to. So probably Larry Atkinson and his bunch are going to bounce back from that. Uh, and then we saw Crestview last night. And, and I was pleased with what we saw. That They got Absolutely. a lot of girls Absolutely. doing some good things yeah. right now. Yeah. I think for Ontario, I think one of the key things is you know, when you have a young team, sometimes you have game plans that are a little bit different. I think New Albany's game plan was to be very physical, to limit the, the touches for Spencer, and to really just, if she's going to get the ball, she's, it's going to hurt a little bit. You know? and, and I don't know that it's necessarily like a dirty tactic, but they don't want it to be easy for her. Here at Northmore, the Golden Knights with a 12 to nothing lead. They scored the opening touchdown on the first play of the ball game, and then they scored a second touchdown in the second quarter. And you take a look at the numbers, Bruce, and the offensive numbers are fairly even. But the big thing for Cardington, three turnovers and eight penalties. Yeah, every time Cardington gets a rhythm going, they get the ball going upfield, they got the great receivers, and they got a great quarterback, they shoot themselves in the foot. Penalty moves them back, and – the turnovers, the interceptions, and the strip ball. They were driving, and that put Northmore in the driver's seat, and, and momentum changes from one team to the other. The one thing that's been consistent is the Northmore defense tonight. Now, you're coaching a young team, so how do you balance wanting your team to come out and play confident, but at the same time wanting them to play a little bit smarter and perhaps try to limit the turnovers? Well, that's one thing you got to do at halftime. you got to be positive with this team. you got to tell them this is our strength. We're doing great. We're throwing the ball all over the place. we got to cut the penalties down. That's the first thing i got to do is cut the penalty down and take care of the ball. So that's Todd Brenninger's side of this now. we got to make sure that we eliminate mistakes and things that we're – you know, you, you emphasize the positive. Now, if you're Scott Armrose on the other side, your defense has really been carrying you and taking an offense that you just look at it and it's one or two plays away from coming back into this, he's really taken that offense out of the ball game. And he really has done a great job. And right now you're in that locker room, you're up 12 nothing, and you put the weight on that defense. You tell these guys, hey, we're up 12-zip. The only way we're going to lose this ball game is if our defense – gives up 13 points. So from that standpoint, you, you, you put your defense out there and you let them play the ball game that they, can, they have been playing and hope 
Cardington continues having their problems. Now, the number that doesn't surprise me is the 99 yards rushing for Northmore. I expect a lot more of Max Lauer in the second half running the ball. He kind of opened up late in the game. You saw him make some first downs here, and especially when he got near that goal line. And you love a back that gets hungry for the goal line. And as he was driving in there, he had Cardington players all over him. He drug them into the end zone. He was not going to be denied. Now, as good as he is offensively, the play of the game so far is the interception where he's tiptoeing on the sideline. Yeah, and, you know, the Northmore defense, they're doing it. When they have to make the big play, they make the big play. And when you're building a team and you want to get something started, your defense will always be ahead of your offense. They just do a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to get your defense going. And the Northmore defense, is just like last week, they're picking it up. Now, we've already talked about the condensed season. You're playing six games. There's going to be seeding within the next couple of weeks. It, it, it's hard in a 10-game season to keep the players focused where they need to be focused. How do you do that on a six-game schedule? And it's really tough. It's uh, I've never been in that situation. But, you know, when everybody's in the playoffs, does that take pressure off the regular season? You know, I sit back and wonder, you know, if I got a player that's hurt, a key player, do you play him in this game even though we're going to be in the playoffs? Is the seed that important? Well, especially when you're playing in stadiums that aren't even to full capacity. So the the quote-unquote home field advantage that you would have if you had your fans and it's just crowded and it's loud, and you're not going to have that. No. And basically, as a coach, you want to continue to improve game after game after game. Cardington, the next game, cut down on the penalties, cut down on the turnovers. You want to keep getting better and better at what you do, and you got to highlight it. And Cardington, they throw the football. I'm very impressed with those that their offense throwing the football. And Northmore, they run the ball. I like a running team. Well, Northmore runs the ball, and the emphasis is on the ground game but they're trying to do some different things through the air. And and I love that. Last game we saw them, their passing game was almost non-existent. So the coach comes back this week and says, hey, we got to get better at the passing game. You take a weakness. You take a weakness in what you did last game, and you try and make it a strength for the next game. Long, long time ago, I played Cardington. They had the Plowman boys. They killed me on the trap play, the inside trap. They kept running it over and over. The next week, we got better, and I said, we're never going to get beat by a trap team, and we improve ourselves on it. Are you one of these coaches that can remember a game 25 years ago? I'm not a Jim Warren. He's our stat guy in Ontario, (laughs) but you remember your losses. You really do. You don't remember your wins. You remember when you got beat, and you tell yourself, why? Why do we get beat? So you don't really remember all the victories, but you remember every one of your losses. Greg Collins told me that once. It's the, the, the games that you win. You know, everybody celebrates those, but it's the ones that get away, especially if it's a playoff game or if it's a tournament game or if it's a really close game against a rival. Those are the games that you remember, and they stick with you for a long time. I came down to Northmore, brought an Ontario team down. We weren't that good, but they had a quarterback named Adrian Wilson, and they had a receiver named Roy and they just threw the ball on us all night. The next game or the next season we come down, Royce is at quarterback. We got to stop him. Well, Cardington won the opening coin toss, and they deferred, so they are going to start with the football here in the third quarter, down by two touchdowns, and we are underway. The opening kickoff is going to be, and he better pick it up. Plowman gets it at the three-yard line, and he runs right through a tackle of Nico Christo. That could have been dangerous for Cardington. They're going to start deep in their own den. And, you know, is it a jinx? Is, is there something about that offense? I mean, you bobble it, you get yourself, and they start out in a hole. So first and ten for Cardington. Both these teams looking for win number two. Cardington looking for that second KMAC win. Lost in all of this. Teams are playing for conference championships as well. They go back to that tight formation. Three receivers bunched to that right side. Denny trying to turn the corner left side, and guess what? Another flag is down. It's a first down for Cardington if it stands. And it's a hold, and it's against Cardington. 
Well, they picked up where they left off last week with the penalties, and they start the second half with a big penalty here. They were already deep in their own end. And, you know, when you come out at halftime, some of the things I like to look at is what adjustments has the team made? What adjustments did Cardington make to get points on the board? They're shooting themselves in the foot again. They're, they're, they're picking up right where they left off. Penalties are hurting this team bad. So it's now first and 16 from the six. Aiden Plowman in the backfield now with the quarterback, Nate Hickman. That's Plowman on the pitch to the near side, and he's got speed to get around that corner, and he gets a lot of it back as he gets up across the, well, actually, they're going to say he ran out of bounds right before the 20. So it makes it a little bit more manageable here now on second down, thanks to that thing that you really can't coach. It's called speed. Yeah. You know, if you got speed, you can cover up a lot of mistakes with that. If, if somebody gets beat in your uh, defensive front, speed will run them down. Just like that. If you have speed, you can get the corner. Hickman fakes the pitch. Breaks through a tackle, but a nice shoestring tackle by Hunter Troyer. So he's able to trip him up before he's able to turn the corner. Northmore defense picking it up right where they left off the first half, playing good hard ball, forcing the Cardington to earn every yard out there. Third down situation. I mean, this defense was solid last week against East Knox, and they have picked that up again here tonight in week three. Third down and three. Denny now the running back. That's Brittinger in motion. He'll take the pitch. He's got a first down. He puts his shoulder down to the 30. Christo up to make the play, but Brittinger with another first down as they continue to just give the ball to their playmakers. And that's smart coaching. Give it to your bread and butter. Let them make the plays for you. So what looked like it was going to be a disaster after a drive that started back inside the five-yard line. It is now first and ten at the Cardington 30. Plowman on the reverse. And again, there's speed as he is brought down from behind by Ramos. But they're going to go for another first down as he is out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And they're moving the ball. They're, they're, they're still in their base offense. And like you said, Brian, speed to get around that corner to make things happen. Cardington's going to have to – Northmore's going to have to turn that play inside where their linebackers can get to it. Plowman, the receiver there on the left side. Hickman hands it to Aiden Plowman. And um, you talk about adjustments, and one of the adjustments that Cardington has made, Todd Brenninger has tried to get the ball more to the speed on the edges. And if you remember, at the beginning of the ball game, they came out and tried to run the edges a little bit. And what that's going to do is going to get those linebackers flying, look for a play-action pass to number 11 pretty soon. Gain of one, second down and nine. Cardington trailing 12 to nothing, 9.48 to go, third quarter. And Hickman, that was a design run all the way. He dives across the 45. Lauer in on the play, along with Garrett Corwin. And Hickman's going to be about two yards shy of the first down. It's third and two. And this is a nice drive. As long as Carnington doesn't shoot themselves in the foot and have a penalty, which puts them in a hole, they're doing a very nice job right now. We've seen this formation before. Hickman going to run, and he's got the first down. The pile is just being <laughs> still not down inside the 35-yard line. We used to call that the wedge. 
You just put your lineman in a wedge and you just drive it up the field and wow. <laughs> Yards after first contact was like 10. Todd Winninger, or Brenninger is more than a softball coach. He has brought a, a, a nice flair to this football team. And they are threatening here on their first drive of the third quarter. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. They run the same play down inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line, a pickup of three. As you said, plays like that builds confidence in your offensive line. When that offensive line knows every time we run this formation, we're going to get three yards, it builds confidence in them. Well, they're taking a very good defensive front for Northmore, and they are pushing them off the line of scrimmage. Hickman swings it out. Brinninger inside, gets up to about the 20, and he's going to be close to another first down. You mix in the pass there, and then they become unpredictable. Chains moving, and this is by far the best-looking drive that Cardington has had here tonight. And if they can get on the scoreboard here, we've got a ball game with 8.09 to go in the third quarter. Play-action pass. The run sets up that play-action pass. Brenninger goes wide to the right. But Hickman's going to stay on the ground. He gives it to Denny, and Denny is stuffed. In on the stop for Northmore was Hunter Troyer, along with Andrew Armrose. As a defensive coordinator, you're sitting there, you know they're going to throw the ball. You know, Carnington, when they get in a bind, they're going to throw the ball. So you're always conscious of the pass, but you got to stop the run right now. Second down and eight. Ashton Plowman goes wide left. They go with three receivers on the right side. Hickman straight back to throw. Feels the pressure, and he's finally brought down a flag. It's going to be a face mask as he was tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Hunter Troyer, but Cardington's going to get some help on this play. As you can see here, as he steps up, right there's the face mask. Just Anytime you see somebody's helmet move in an odd direction, pretty good chance it's a face mask call. So that's going to make it second down and four inside the 15-yard line. They still need to pick up the flag, which is laying at the 26-yard line. There they go. Todd Brenninger is probably like if he doesn't have it in his pocket, he can't throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch is out to Plowman. Nice cutback, gets down to about the 12. Still about a yard shy of a first down, third and short. Rapidly moving third quarter, 6.39 to go. Cardington trailing 12 to nothing, but they're making it interesting here in their first drive of the third quarter. They go back to that stacked backfield, and this time Northmore they find a way to stop it. Somebody got a gap. Somebody on the offensive line for Karin Ding closed down. Looks like a linebacker shot through, made the big stop. Fourth down. Big play, Brian. Big play right here. Fourth and one, and the offense staying on the field for Cardington. This is sending a message that you have a lot of confidence in your young ball club. Wildcat formation, the quarterback splits out, Brian. It's going to be a direct snap to Brenninger. And he's going to have the first down. It's first and goal at the eight-yard line. And again, they give the ball to their playmaker. Smart coaching. There used to be a day when coaches would try to outsmart themselves. Well, let's run a reverse here, and then a play breaks down. Anymore, put the ball in your best player's hands, let them make the decision on the field, not you on the sidelines. Cardington threatening first and goal from the nine. Their deepest penetration of the night. Hickman back to throw. Sets, fires, caught, touchdown, Lester. 
Zach Lester with the touchdown reception from nine yards out, and Cardington scores on their first drive of the third quarter. And what a drive. Very nice, Brian. Very nice drive. And the only thing that was missing, penalties. They had a couple penalties early, but look what they did when they cut out the penalties. They moved the ball right down the field. First touchdown reception of the season for Lester. And they're going to go for two. Hickman out of the gun. And there's movement on the line. Talk about penalties. Yep. Here we go, Brian. I jinxed them. This is where that youth and it's going to back them up. And I think they're still going to go for two. And really, in this play, it really kind of opens your playbook. It doesn't really hurt you that deep. You can throw a pass here now. You can run a pattern over the middle. I was talking about that earlier. Cardington will be in their offense no matter where they are. They can throw the ball. They're always in an offensive position. Trips to the left. Hickman out of the gun. Drops back. Looks to throw. Lofts it up. Guess who? Touchdown. Or two-point conversion, excuse me. And he threw it to big number 11. So it's 12 to 8, 525 to go, third quarter. Now, how does Northmore respond to the touchdown by Cardington? And that's where the momentum. Northmore's offense has to do something on the field. They have to give that defense a little breather. Cardington, they must have ran 12 plays there, and they wore that defense down a little bit. It's only game three. Kids aren't in really good shape yet. That defense, was, they're breathing heavily. They were on the field a long time. The offense now has to give that defense a little bit of break and get some field position back. They ate up almost three quarters of the third quarter. There's 5.25 to go. And this is the first time the Northmore offense will be on the field in the second half. And that's the type of drives that will break a team in half. They take time off the clock and they start to get a little momentum, and they start to get a little cocky out there, too. They're going to they're gonna light up this defense of Cardington's now. First kickoff of the game was a squib kick, and they come back with another one. And Northmore's going to have very good field position as the return is up to the 41-yard line. But did, so, you, did you notice the hit? Cardington came down, and they smacked that receipt ball carrier I think the Cardington defense is going to make a statement right here. The offense comes out, moves the ball down. Great. Now let's see if the Cardington defense can take a stand. Golden Knights ball, first and 10 at their 41. Northmore has to move the ball. They've got to get a little momentum back. Cortez up under center. Gives it to Lauer. And Lauer gets a hard-fought yard. All week long during practice, that defensive corner has been telling them, number six, stop number six. Anytime they line up in this formation, look for six coming back this way. And they're shutting down that sophomore. But Northmore needs to make a statement here. They must move the ball. They got to break Cardington's momentum. Second and nine. Stay on the ground. This time it's Corwin. Flag comes flying in. Ball's on the ground. Let's see who has it. Cardington thinks they do and they've got it. But let's see what the flag is. If it stands, it's Cardington ball at their own 45 yard line. Holding. So it's Cardington ball. The penalty was on Northmore. And that's one of the things we just got done talking about, Brian. Northmore's offense had to take the momentum away from Cardington. Look for Cardington. I look for him to come out and throw the ball deep. Right now, Northmore defense are tired. They are on the field for a long drive. Two plays later, they're back on the field. If you're going to throw it and go deep, now's the time to do it, Cardington. First and 10 at the Pirate 40. They get the ball back after the turnover. Oh, 
Nate Hickman out of the gun. Rolls to his right. He's under pressure and he is dumped at the 40 yard line. Could not get away from Hunter Troyer. Big number 45. Big play by that Northmore defense. That was a big play, Brian. Loss of five, second and 15. And this is what they did last week at East Knox. They can, they just, remember East Knox would drive in between the 20s, but then Northmore would come up with a big play when they had to. They and need, that's what they need to do here now. <laughs> You're right. They need one now. Plowman on the reverse. He breaks some tackles, and he is down to the 35-yard line, finally brought down by C.J. Stoney. Again, they go back to the speed of Ashton Plowman as they give it to him on the reverse. This kid's a sophomore. Unbelievable the speed he has. And he was just one player away from breaking it. One player away from breaking it. First and 10 at the Northmore 35. They have the Golden Knights on their heels. Pitches to Brenninger. He's got running room down the far sideline. And he gets into the end zone, or was he pushed out? Touchdown. No, they're saying he went into the end zone. Cardington now takes the lead. 35-yard touchdown run. And you talk about, and we use this word all the time in sports, a huge swing in momentum. And I really believe the Northmore defense is wearing down. That opening drive took the wind out of them a little bit, and they just haven't got their second wind yet. They will go for two. Hickman back to throw. Sets, pumps, fires. It's tipped and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ashton Plowman. So with 3.19 to go, it is a two-point lead for Cardington as they have scored on their first two possessions of the third quarter. And in a half that looked like it was dominated by Northmore, Cardington comes out in the third quarter and says, wait a minute, we're not done here. And they, they've shown it. They have op- their passing game. They're using their speed to get around the corners, and they are slowly wearing down that Northmore defense. And when you run an offense that throws the ball, spreads you out, uh, your defense is running all over the place. And it's like running wind sprints in practice. They get worn down. And you can see when they come to the sidelines, <gasps> They're taking those deep breaths, and they're not exactly jogging off the field. They are being worn down. Well, and you talked about this before. This has not been the typical offseason. This has not been the typical preseason. These teams are not as conditioned as they would be normally in week three. Yeah, you know, you lost your scrimmages. You lost a lot of your summer conditioning. Tyler Rose with it teed up. His first two kickoffs have been squib kicks, and he's going to do an onside kick here. It's going to be offside, though. Got a little too anxious. That's their third penalty of the half for 20 yards. This team cleans up the penalties and the turnovers, and this is a team that you don't want to draw in the postseason. No, they're just going to keep getting better and better, and that passing attack is going to keep getting you know more and more improvement. They have the skilled athletes to make it happen, and when you put the plowman speed in there, woo-hoo, watch out. They're going to be a nightmare for defensive coordinators. Rose tees it up again, this time from the 35. Well, they kick it over the front wedge. Lauer picks it up at the 35. He's dropped after about a two-yard return. And this may be the understatement of the night, but Cardington's fired up. Oh, momentum. They come out the second half, have that long drive, takes the majority of the time off the clock. They score. Defense holds, gets the turnover. Next thing you know, they score. They take the lead. 
They are on fire, Brian. They are on fire. Now, having said all of that, Northmore is not going to panic. No. Scott Armrose has built this into a championship caliber team. They are not going to panic. They're not going to abandon their game plan. They're not going to go away quietly. Run it. Just run it. Make something happen with the run game. Here it comes. And there's Lauer. And <laughs> I tell you what, he makes a four-yard run look fun. Yards after contact. He's getting it. He's got Carnington on him at the line of scrimmage, and he's still getting four yards every play. And he's only a sophomore. Gain of four, second down and six. 6'2", 230 pounds. I might sign him to a contract after the game just for future <laughs> reference. He's a strong-looking dude. Cortez swings it out. It's caught by Ramos. And the Cardington defense now swarms to the ball, led by Ashton Plowman. No gain on the play. Third down and six. Two minutes, 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Northmore now trailing after leading the entire first half. The one thing they don't want to do is turn the ball over or give it to Cardington on a short field. They would really like to get a first down here. Trips to the left. Cortez out of the gun. He's going to run it. Cortez breaks a tackle, gets around the edge, gets to the 40, and it's a first down for Northmore. He's pushed out of bounds by Joe Denny, and like I said, Northmore's not going away. No. They're too good of a ball club. Too good of a ball club. And I don't even sense... They're not even fired up on the sideline. It's it's like a business-like mentality on that sideline. And if you get a good look at the replay later, watch the block number six had. Watch the block that Max had to free up Cortez. First and ten at the 40. This time he goes from blocker to runner. Bruising runner. And he is down to the 26-yard line. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go out and make a bold statement. That young man's going to be playing on Saturday afternoon somewhere in the next three years. Again, yards after. Nobody touched him. The offensive line did a good job, but when those linebackers and the secondary people hit him, he got another six yards. He is big. He is strong. He has good footwork. And what I like about him, he blocks. He will block. First and ten inside the 30. Swing it out. This one's caught by Stoney. Stoney gets a couple. And that's a nice little change of pace, seeing Cortez swing the ball out and get a couple of yards, get some positive things out of that passing game. What that does, that kind of opens up the field for you. It moves a linebacker. He might take an extra step outside. You can see Cardington making adjustments now, widening. Opens up the seams inside. Second and eight from the Pirate 26. And now Northmore on the move with 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cortez follows Lauer around the left side. He's brought down from behind by Joe Denny. And it's going to be third down. A big third down for the Golden Knight offense. And as coach on the sideline, he's got to remember, he's got two plays. He's got third down and fourth down to get the first down. And I'm pretty sure one or six are going to carry the ball. Third and four. It's Lauer. And it's a first down as he is down to about the 16-yard line. This is what he did last week against East Knox. He picked up a lot of steam in the second half and got the majority of his 80 yards after the intermission. And one thing I noticed on that play, nobody touched him until he got into the second level. It was the linebackers. That offensive line is creating a seam in there, and you got to give credit to that offensive line. It's the final play of the third quarter. We head to the fourth, 14-12 Cardington. You're watching high school football live and free exclusively on the OH Report.
customers do come in and they do feel like they're a part of our family and they feel like they know us and we know them and we care. Park National, our family of banks, all together now. It's scientifically proven to protect up to 62% more than oil alone. We guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Available at these fine retailers. Real results powered by science. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com. Twelve minutes to go. Cardington with a two-point lead. And the first play of the fourth quarter, a procedure call against Northmore. Max Lauer got a little too impatient there. As sophomore jitters. Sophomore jitters. But I tell you what, he doesn't play like a sophomore. No. <laughs> he does not play like a sophomore on either side of the ball. He is a playmaker on defense. He had a fine interception in the second quarter. And, you know, we know what he can do running the ball. Does he leave the field ever? No. No, he's a two-way guy, and he is out there for every single snap, it seems like. Penalty backs them up first and 15 from the 18-yard line. Cortez going to run. Right side, spins, finally brought down at the 15-yard line, and guess what? I know it's going to surprise you. Another flag is down. Yeah, it looks like holding. Anytime they throw it and your offensive lineman looks around and says, me? No, I didn't do it. I didn't touch him. It's not like basketball players. They never commit a turnover. They never travel. They never foul. So it's the second penalty to start things off here in the fourth quarter. Northmore moving the ball, but they're moving in the wrong direction. And that's going to hurt them. They do not have the type of offense to make up a first and 20. But I know the Northmore coach, he has a game plan. You don't need to get it all in one play. You got four downs. You're in four down territory, and you got to make up 25 yards in four downs. Ball back out to the 32-yard line. Scott Armros just very frustrated on the near sideline. You don't mind having plays where the defense main, but when you hurt yourself with penalties, Cortez swings it out to Stoney, and he has swarmed under. He had absolutely nowhere to go. Aiden Plowman, as soon as he caught that pass, planted him at the 37-yard line. In your defense, they can play hard nose. They can come up on the players. I'll bet you any amount of money they've looked at this play over and over in practice and on films. They know what's coming, and you jump the ball. Second down and 27 from the Cardington 35-yard line. Play clock's running down. Both teams with three timeouts. And a timeout's going to have to be taken by Northmore as the play clock was winding down. We'll take a break as well. Cardington with a 14-12 lead. You're watching high school football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. We are uniting Park National's family banks under one name to serve you more. This bank's about service, service to the community. I mean, your customers become your family, and by and large, you become their family. Customers do come in and they do feel like they're a part of our family, and they feel like they know us and we know them and we care. Park National, our family of banks, all together now. Down by two, 14-12, 10-53 to go in the ball game. Northmore with a second and 27 from the Cardington 35-yard line. Brian Harder, Bruce Weirig from Northmore High School. We've got a good one here. Lauer trying to turn the corner. Another flag is down. Lauer carrying defenders. He's down to the 10, but is it going to stand? 
And that's called in the holding area again. And Lauer a little slow to get up, but holding on Northmore. So Cardington was guilty of a lot of penalties in the first half. Northmore getting their calls here in the fourth quarter, and this is a big one. Yeah. Because it wiped away a huge run by Max Lauer. That was a first down. It had been first and goal. They had the momentum. They got it down in there. Penalty. Coach's worst nightmare, penalties. Penalty is going to march the ball all the way out to the 40-yard line. The first down, they need to get down to the eight. And I got to hand it to Northmore. They've been dealt a bad hand a couple plays, but they've opened it up and made something happen. Their running game is getting them going. Let's see what Scott Armros decides to do here on second and long. They stay on the ground. That's Cortez. He's dropped at the 20 or the 34-yard line. Short gain on the play. Aiden Plowman came up to make the play defensively. Now you're in a third and long situation. Northmore's got to get points now. I have all the respect in the world for that offensive line out there. Let's see if they can't make something happen. 9.50 to go. Max is off the field. Pump fake. Nice throw, and is it caught? Yes. Yes. Inside the 20 to the about the 17-yard line, Trenton Ramos, and that was a perfectly thrown ball by Marcus Cortez. Watch the throw. He lays it out there perfectly. The Aiden all- Plowman back on coverage, but it's fourth and nine, a little bit more manageable here, and Max Lauer back out on the field. Big play, Brian, big play for a team that runs the ball. Very big pass. Cortez with the Golden Knights. Eight seconds to go on the play clock. Lauer on the right side. He stood up and he has dropped at the 15-yard line. He was met at the line of scrimmage by Zach Lester. And that's a huge play for the Cardington defense. So Cardington gets the ball back on downs. That was huge for this Cardington defense. And it was, and what a heartbreak for Northmore. They ran that same play earlier. He took it all the way down, would have been a first down and goal. Penalty ripes it out. The coach does a great job, comes back with the play again. Cardington was ready for it. Pirates maintain their two-point lead. Now let's see if they can eat clock. 8.50 to go. That's Plowman in motion. They pitch it to him. And he is going to be dropped at about – his forward progress should be to the 21, a gain of about four. Cortez came over to make the play defensively. Actually, they're going to give him about six yards. It'll be second and four. And right now, Northmore needs a stop. They need to get the ball back. Cardington just wants to take a nice, leisurely stroll down the field, take as much time off that clock as they can. Well, and they've got three guys in the lineup now that can run the ball. You've got both Plowmans that can run on the edges, and Denny can run in between the tackles. And Oh, yeah. You've got this guy here, Brinninger, who lines up as the quarterback, takes the direct snap and gets up to about the 27, so he's close to a first down. Weapons. Multiple weapons. That is a first down. And that's not the first time they've gone to Trey Brinninger to make a big play. He's a very gifted athlete. and He's hobbling there a little bit, too. But I tell you what, the senior, he's not coming out. And he'll, he'll, he'll walk it off. 
Fresh set of downs for the Pirates. Aiden Plowman. Look at that. He is slippery, he is fast, and he is down to midfield. Wow. It is fun to watch players, Bruce, with that kind of speed and elusiveness. It brings back nightmares. <laughs> you, you, you cannot stop a player like that once they get into the open field. You really got to hand it to Northmore's defense for making something happen there. But when you get a gifted athlete that has as much speed and how can you stop on a dime and go left? Unbelievable. Andrew Armrose down on the field at about the 36-yard line. And this would not be good news for Northmore. He is a solid player on both sides of the ball for the Golden Knights. And one of the things you start to look at is defense. How winded is that defense going to be? And as you pointed out earlier, Brian, Nor Cardington has a whole wealth of people in the backfield who can carry the ball and make things happen. That is good to see. As Andrew Armrose up and walking off the field under his own power. And we look at this, we kind of think Cardington's got the flow going, but they're only two points ahead. I mean, one well, this turnover. This is still anybody's ball game. One strip ball. Northmore did it earlier. They stripped the ball and got the ball back. An interception, a fumble. Cardington penalties. This is still, as you said, anybody's ball game. Cardington with the ball in Northmore territory at their 49-yard line. Trying to add to a two-point lead. Aiden Plowman in the backfield now with the quarterback, Nate Hickman. One thing Carnington's doing, that quarterback's looking at the play clock. He's not going to call the play until there's like five seconds maybe. Plowman. Timing that play thrown off a little bit. It was a low snap. Stop right about the line of scrimmage, so it'll be second and ten. And Cardington is no hurry. They want to burn as much time off this clock as they can. Six and a half minutes to go. Let's see who can make the big play on that defense out there, Brian. Somebody's got to step up and make a big play on that defense. Well, and there are playmakers on that side of the ball. There's no doubt about it. And we've seen that. Last game we saw it happen. One of their playmakers, Hunter Troyer, just came off the field. Now the officials are over talking to Scott Armrose. I'm not sure what they're discussing with him. Doesn't appear to be. He's talking to Hunter Troyer on the sideline. It could have been an attitude adjustment. The official takes him out for a play, tells the coach, calm him down. Second down and 10 for the Pirates. Denny stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. And we talked about playmakers. And Garrett Corwin came up and made a big play there. It's now third and 12. And Northmore needs that. They've lived and died on that defense so far this season. And the defense has got to step up. It is now a passing situation. Let's see if Northmore can put the rush on the quarterback or pick it off. Or, you know, you've had Ashton Plowman making plays. You try to get him the ball and you let his legs get you a first down. Oh, well, they're going to pitch it to the other Plowman, Aiden Plowman. He stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but there's a flag on the play. This is a holding play. It looks like it might be on Cardington. To be honest with you, I think Northmore could probably decline this play. Make yeah, it's it fourth, fourth down. down. 
Yep, they're going to decline it. So that makes it fourth and 12. Ball at the Cardington 49-yard line. They're going to take the play, which was a loss. It is now fourth down. Talk about a big play again, Brian. Here it is. Let's see if that north. Oh, they're going to punt it to him. Trenton Ramos back to receive. Northmore should get pretty good field position. Hickman back to kick from the Pirate 35-yard line. Ramos falls, and it's going to roll, and they're going to start inside the one. That's what artificial wow. turf. That's what artificial <laughs> turf will do for you. You could not have run down there and just placed the ball inside the one and gotten better results than that. This is where memories are made. Northmore has 99 yards in front of them to win the ball game. Can they march 99 yards and make it happen? Four minutes, 49 seconds to go, two timeouts. Because there's not too many more changes of possession. Northmore may get the ball back one more time if they don't get a first down. First and 10 at the one. Cortez is going to run it. Tries to get a little bit of breathing room. Runs to that left side. And he'll get up to about the four. So it'll be second down and six. Northmore needs to get, just get a couple first downs to get a little breathing room. Running over to that left side behind Big Dustin Sanders. Now they give it to Lauer. And Lauer is stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. They knew that was coming. Yeah. that's. They probably looked at that play a hundred times on video. Whenever they line up in this formation, we're going to flow to Max because he's going to get the ball. Loss of one. Third down and a long six. We'll call it seven. Under four minutes to go. 352 and counting. This is a big play right here. You need the first down because if you're put in a fourth down situation, just like at East Knox, Northmore. Cortez out of the gun, deep in his own territory as he stands in his own end zone. Swings it out. He's got an open receiver. It's knocked away at the last minute. He was trying to find Trenton Ramos. Pass a little bit overthrown. And now here's a decision. There you see the replay. They were in basically the same position against East Knox, and they go for it. They didn't make it. They gave him a short field. Eli Huffman went up and knocked the ball away in a sure punting situation for Northmore. Garrett Corwin, he didn't like being back there. And what this is going to do, you talk about pressure on a defense. The Northmore defense is going to feel the weight of the world on their shoulders. Cardington not even setting up a return. It's a high, short kick. Cardington's going to get very good field position out of this. It is down at the 20-yard line. Cardington with a two-point lead, 325 to go, and the ball at the Northmore 20-yard line. And that's where you look at yourself and say, wow, if we would have gone for it, they got the ball here. We punted it. They're still going to get the ball there. The weight of the world is on those 11 gentlemen out there in the black uniforms, Brian. First and 10. They spot the ball at the Northmore 21. 3.25 to go. Northmore has two timeouts, so the clock is going to become a factor now. Trips to the left. Joe Denny is the tailback. Denny gets the call, and Denny is behind the line of scrimmage on the ground. Dustin Sanders in on the play, and a timeout that 
taken by Northmore. They've got one more to go. Brian Harder, Bruce Weirich from Northmore High School. We have got a good one here in week three. Both teams looking for win number two. Both teams looking to build some momentum as they head towards the postseason. Yes, I said postseason because everybody's getting in. And Cardington looked, they looked sluggish in the first half. They were making mistakes. They were committing penalties. They had three turnovers. They have been a totally different team here in the second half. Yeah, they got their passing game going, but more importantly than that, their speed is showing up. Plowmans are getting around the corners, are making things happen. They're forcing that defense to spread out to cover the whole field. But one thing I really liked, I'm watching that defense come over to the sideline, and the coaches are going out talking to them, and the coaches are jacked up. They're clapping hands. They're congratulating those guys, telling them just keep playing defense. They're always being positive with them. Second down and 14 ball resting at the Northmore 25. And if Northmore is going to get another opportunity, it's because of that defense out there on the field right now. Northmore can stop the clock one more time. I would be surprised if Cardington puts the ball in the air. Double reverse, ball's on the ground, and who has it? Well, we talked about the defense coming up with a big play. They forced, they almost forced a turnover, but it's going to be third and long. What a risky play. Anytime you have two or three handoffs going in a play and your defense is coming through some gaps, wow. Northmore uses their final timeout to stop the clock with 3.10 to go. It is now third down and about 24. Ball at the Northmore 33-yard line. Cardington needs to get down to the 11 for a first down. And as we mentioned, Brian, those 11 men on the field are going to determine the outcome of this game real quick because if they can stop Cardington, that's going to put that offense back on the field for another shot at the win. But then it comes back to the same thing that Northmore faced last week is their – Although they have thrown the ball better tonight mm -hmm. than they did last week against East Knox, they're not a team that's designed to really throw the football, but they have shown a lot more improvement in that phase of the game here tonight, so that, that doesn't make them one-dimensional here should they get the ball back. Brininger takes the direct snap, and he's got nowhere to go. Flag comes flying in, which is a good thing because it stops the clock but it's a bad thing because I think it's a face mask call, which is a 15-yard penalty, and that's something you do not want right now. Anytime that offense is going to get yardage and the clock is stopped, that hurts. That is a huge penalty against Northmore. Right now, Northmore is gaining 15 yards and the clock's not moving, and that just buries your teams. Well, the good news for Northmore is it's not an automatic first down. It's third down and eight inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line. The bad news is the clock now starts on the placement of the ball, and we're under three minutes to go, and Cardington can run two more plays here, and Northmore can't stop the clock. Right. We're getting down to crunch time. Third and eight. And a timeout is going to be taken by Cardington. They don't want to make a mistake here. Right, and that's what the problem was. If you notice the quarterback, the quarterback was looking around. He was making a call. The coach saw the problem. Instead of making a mistake, let's call timeout. Let's get it together, and let's get our first down. I like that call by the first-year head coach because, yes, it does stop the clock, and Northmore wasn't able to do that. But you're in a position here where this play can win you the ball game, and you don't want to make that crucial turnover. You don't want to commit that crucial penalty. Cardington has two plays to get eight yards. Two plays to get eight yards and a victory. And if you're Northmore – you are going after the football. You're trying to knock it out. You're trying to punch it out. You're trying to 
disrupt the rhythm of Cardington's offense. They need to come up with a big play here on the defensive side of the ball. Coaches run drills during the practice. Strip the ball, strip the ball, stand the receiver up. It all, it makes your back better hanging on to the ball, teaches your defense how to get the ball. Joe Denny is the tailback. Hickman out of the gun on third and eight. Plowman in motion. They give it to Plowman. On the right side, he has stood up and cannot get around that right corner. Huge defensive play by Tyler Boggs for Northmore, and, and, boy, and it's fourth down. Did he come up and support it? He came right up and made the big hit. Northmore defense, they're selling out right now. They're making everything happen. 25 seconds to go on the play clock. And Cardington is going to let that wind down. 2-11 to go on the game clock. Fourth and 10. This is the ball game for Northmore. They have to get a stop here. And they would get the ball back with about a minute and a half to go. Timeout taken by Cardington. One more timeout remaining. And what a second half, Brian. Oh, what a second half. Compared to the first half, this second half has had all the excitement we could have asked for. We've seen some offense. We've seen some mistakes. We've seen great defense from both sides. We've seen speed on the outside. We've seen hard running up the middle. This is one of those games where you hate to see somebody lose it. Todd Brenninger, as we said, in his first season as the head coach, and you look at this roster. And we talk about playmakers. Aiden Plowman and Ashton Plowman, sophomores. Nate Hickman, your quarterback, is a junior. Joe Denny is a junior. You, you've got offensive playmakers that you're going to have beyond this season. So you can use this as a building block. And the future looks very bright for Cardington. This would be a big win for them psychologically if they can come into Northmore and take one from the Golden Knights. Fourth and ten. Hickman's going to throw it. Pumps, looks, left side. And that's offensive pass interference. Brenninger trying to get position on C.J. Stoney, and he pushed off. And it'll probably be we'll de decline it. We're going to take the ball, and we're going to – do you believe in miracles? <laughs> well, if they decline the penalty, Northmore's going to get the ball at their own 21-yard line, down by two with 1.45 to go. All you got to do is get in field goal range. They don't have a field goal yet this season, but you don't need to score a touchdown here. Three points will put a W in the win column for you, and basically Northmore's got to get into a hurry-up offense. They got to get down the field fast. And Cardington... They're just going to set people back. They're going to get an umbrella defense. Everything stays underneath and will work up to the ball. I think we had an official's timeout here. And if you ask me, this is a lot like last week's ball game for Northmore. They had a couple opportunities to make it happen. There's a player down on the field. Number 22 is being looked at right now. That was C.J. Stoney, who was the defender on the pass play. I don't know if we could know if we can get a replay and see what happened to him, but he was the one who was. Anytime you have a player laying down and he pulls his helmet off, they're in pain. Now he's sitting up, and as they tend to him, we'll take a timeout. 1.45 to go. Cardington up by two. You're watching High School Football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Restore your engine to like new performance. Stiction Eliminator cleans and protects all engines with a patented carbon nano lubricant. It removes the harmful burnt oil from inside your engine. Stoney is off the field and Northmore gets the ball first and 10 at their 21 yard line down by three. They swing it out. It's a short completion to Ramos. And another player down on the field. This one is from Cardington. 
So I can't see who it is who is down, but now the clock will stop with 1.34 to go. No gain on the play. We're late in the ball game. These kids have been out there a long time. We're probably not in the best shape. Leg cramps. You start coming up with leg cramps, little aches and pains here, and you always play it on the safe side. You always want to make sure that athlete is 100% when they take him off that field. Well, look who's being stretched at the 30. Max Lauer for Northmore. Trying to make sure that his legs stay as fresh as they can for these final one minute, 34 seconds to go. Right now, Northmore is in four down territory. Ashton Plowman is the one who was down for Cardington. He is up. And I think you nailed it. I think it was a cramp. Now he's going to try and stay on the field, but he's got to come off. Yeah, if you're down, <laughs> they blow the whistle. You have to leave the field. He wants to stay. Northmore now back to the line. Second down and 10. You can see the Cardington defense. They have four guys. They're going to go deep. Nobody's going to get behind them. Cortez rolls to his left, swings it out, caught and out of bounds. Griffin Workman makes the reception, and more importantly, he gets six yards and gets out of bounds, stopping the clock with 117 to go. Third down and four. Cortez swings it out again, intended for Ramos, and again incomplete. Hickman on the play defensively, and this is going to be it, the final play. A fourth down and four call for Northmore with one minute to go. They don't convert here, it's over. And this is where the coach has got to make that decision. Do you throw the ball or do you take the ball and run your best play? Put the ball in the hands of your best players. Let them make the decision on the field. It all comes down to this, fourth down and four. Cortez rolls, has a receiver, it's caught. And he does not get enough, or does he? Yep, they gave it to him. Workman made the reception. He just got enough for the first down. So the Golden Knights still alive. 57 seconds to go. Officials are going to talk about something. You know, what amazing. You know, last week they had trouble throwing the ball. Now fourth down and four, and they need a play. Instead they, of going with the running game, they give it to the passing game. And they get four yards. And they got it. <laughs> I don't know what the officials are talking about, the 35-yard line. I have no idea what they're talking about right now. I know they're not calling for a replay. <laughs> yeah. We're the only ones that see it up here right now. Whatever it is, they seem to be – Satisfied now, 57 seconds to go. Northmore down by two with the ball at their own 31-yard line, first and 10. I got to say, with these stadiums that are not at full capacity, you can at points hear a pin drop. Yep. It gets eerily quiet. And with only one band also. Cortez out of the gun. Drops back, lofts it up, right side. It's going to be incomplete. He was looking at Gavin Miller, but threw it out of bounds. It'll be second and 10, 52 seconds to go. And you can tell just by watching this Northmore team, Coach worked on the passing game this week. Oh, yeah. They, they've done a lot more with the passing game than we saw last week. They're throwing the different receivers, different looks. Now they're in a trip formation. Second down and 10. Cortez rolling to his left under pressure. He's hit and it's picked off. 
Touchdown on the interception return by Joe Denny, and that came because there was pressure on the backside by Ashton Plowman. Joe Denny seals it, but watch the pressure here on the backside as Plowman comes around the edge. And he just hit him as he was releasing the ball, and Denny takes it into the end zone. And I'll tell you this much, you can feel that pressure as a quarterback. You can feel it even though you can't see it, and here they come. The final timeout being taken by Coach Brinninger. I'll tell you what, what a ball game we have seen here in week three. Cardington was all but buried at halftime. But we kept talking about they had that potential and they had the weapons that if they could get on the board and make a game of it, they could make it interesting, and they have dominated the second half. Yeah, I, I think the speed of Cardington kind of caught up with Northmore. Northmore played a lot of defense this half. Those guys got worn down a little bit. And uh, Cardington, they are looking good. The Plowmans with the speed, quarterback, receivers, offensive line starting to come together. They cut out all the penalties this half. They had a few, but they didn't have eight of them. Oh, and they didn't have the big one. They didn't have the one that yep. killed a drive. They didn't have one that kept the drive alive for Northmore. They didn't commit that big mistake. Got to get the ball out there because that's kind of important when you're trying to run a play. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to go for two. And Hickman is going to go right up the middle, and he's still fighting, but he's not getting in. Uh, that's that Northmore defense jamming up the middle. So Cardington with 43 seconds to go. They are up by eight. Northmore is going to get it back with 43 seconds to go. And it can still happen. It can still happen. Touchdown, go for two. It is tie ball game. We go to overtime. Oh. I didn't bring my heart medication. This would be a huge win for Cardington. They were 1-9 and nine a year ago. So there was the change in head coaches. And Todd Brenninger comes over. He was the softball coach. Been there, been the head coach there for nine seasons, winning eight straight league titles and making three trips to the final four. And it looks like he has been able to bring some of that winning attitude and that, that edge to this football program. And they come into a team like Northmore, who is one of the better teams in this area, and they take care of business in the second half. And you have skilled players. That that'll take you so far. Lauer from the 30. And he is going to be pulled down at about the 43. So have you ever seen that young man get hit and driven backwards? No. No. Every time he makes contact, there's more yards gained. He moves the pile. And whoever makes a tackle on that young man, <laughs> You're going to wake up tomorrow morning with a few bruises here and there. Well, Northmore has the ball. They need a touchdown now and a two-point conversion, and they have 38 seconds to go and no timeouts. Cortez looks to his right, and that's going to be pass interference. Cardington is going to make a big mistake there. Northmore is going to get a first down at the 40. Pass was intended for Gavin Miller. And that moves the stakes. Stops the clock. Only five seconds went off the clock. And like I mentioned earlier, anytime you can move the ball and the clock's not moving, that's saying something positive about your team. 33 seconds to go. Northmore with it at the Pirate 45. Take it 
Cortez back to throw. Right side, lofts it up again looking for Miller. This time it's picked off by Lester. Zach Lester that time, the ball was thrown high and short. And that is going to do it. Cardington is going to escape with an eight-point win. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I like the enthusiasm of Northmore. Never give up. They never gave up. They came down, they fought, they had 27 seconds on the clock, and they still tried to move the ball. There's no way for Northmore to stop the clock. This is a victory formation for Cardington. Put the knee down, and it's over. What a huge win for a young Cardington team. But I'll take nothing away from Northmore. We saw a tremendous oh. improvement from last week's loss to this week. A lot of improvement, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And they are going to fall tonight here in week three, 20-12, as Cardington escapes with a big win in the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. You're watching High School Football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Restore your engine to like new performance. Stiction Eliminator cleans and protects all engines with a patented carbon nano lubricant. It removes the harmful burnt oil from inside your engine, reduces wear, and restores power. It's scientifically proven to protect up to 62% more than oil alone. We guarantee performance improvement or your money back. Available at these fine retailers. Real results powered by science. Learn more at hotshotsecret.com. Cardington with a big 20-12 win on the road against Northmore. We're joined by head coach Todd Brenninger. And, Coach, your first year, what were you expecting when you came over here in this, I would say, tough environment, but with COVID and, you know, you're not playing in front of a full crowd. But this is still a hard place to play. It's always been a hard place to play. Northmore is an excellent team. Uh, they always have a, a bunch of really good athletes. You saw their running back. He's 6'2", 6'3", 230, really hard to bring down. Their quarterback is so quick. Uh, we expected a battle. Um, we knew what they were. Uh, we knew kind of what the play, plays were. We had, a, I think, a pretty good game plan from our offensive and defensive staffs. Um, but we expected that. Um, I wish we wouldn't start off so slow. We have every game, it seems like. Uh, but I'm, I'm extraordinarily proud of my guys. Now, last week against Danville, you had a lot of penalties. You came out in the first half this week, and you had a lot of penalties, and you had some turnovers. But this isn't your typical young team. They didn't panic in the second half. No. We've got some great senior leadership. Um, most of them have started four years. We had a young team four years ago, and they have started – Every year, Nate Hickman, our quarterback, is a three-year starter. Joe Denny is a three-year starter. Um, you know, the two sophomores on our offensive line started all last year. Uh, so we've got guys that are young but experienced. Um, and they, they got a ton of heart, ton of heart. That's all I can say about them. Now, the defense especially is very young, but you came over here and you took one of the better running backs in this area out of the ballgame. Yeah, uh, well, we know we had to hit him with more than one guy because he's a, he's a load to bring down. He's a big, big kid, strong kid. 
Um, and we knew, you know, you saw a couple times we tried to hit him up high and he was like, he was swatting flies away. Uh, but when we started going low, hitting low, trying to take out his legs, uh, we started, I think we beat him up a little bit, uh, to be honest. I, he was he was limping a little bit at the end. Our guys were limping too because they were getting hit pretty hard. But uh, we wanted to hit him hard and often uh, to try to take, his, take him out of the game a little bit. Now, when people saw the hire, they look mm-hmm. at the softball coach coming over to coach football, they're probably kind of scratching their heads, but you're taking a, a lot of that success and that mindset that you have with the softball program, and it looks like it's translating over to the football team. Yeah, it, we talked a lot about, um, you know, what the uh, – what, what's the word I want to say? Uh, the culture of this team. Um, and it goes back to the senior class because I've coached them. I coached them in fourth grade basketball uh, way back when. Obviously, one of my, my son's, uh, you know, number 11. So I've coached them for a long time. I knew they had a great heart. Um, and with everything going on, I thought it was the perfect time for me to step in because we didn't know what the season was going to look like, to be honest. I, we had no idea. We still don't know. Uh, to be honest. Uh, so it was it was time for me to step in, uh, but they've done the work. Uh, we I told them I wanted to change the culture. Uh, when I was interviewed, um, you know, one of the interviewees asked me, how, how quickly can you change the car- culture? And I said, day one. That's when it works because if you try to change it after that, it doesn't work. Uh, so day one, it has to change, and it changed. So people talk about that, but what did you do specifically to change that culture? Um, positive uh, environment, pumping them up, tearing them down a little bit when they need it. But I, I've been difficult on them, uh, especially this week. Uh, after a loss like that, kind of get, gets in your crawl a little bit. Uh, we had a couple kids forget their pants, you know, 7 o'clock lifting Monday, forget a practice jersey. And we, you know, we actually shortened practice because I – yelled at him for the first half hour and talked him up the second half <laughs> or the last half hour uh, to try to build him back up. Told him some stories about my career and ups and downs. And it's how you respond, and it's, it's about their character. Um, and that's what I've been preaching and the other coaches, coaches have been preaching. It's about your character, who you are. I said, I want to come out here and compete. I don't care what the score. You know, obviously we do care at the, at the end of the day, but as long as we complete, compete every single play, then we're going to be in a good spot at the end of the game. Now, I have a background in coaching boys basketball and girls in track, and I okay. know there's a difference in coaching yes. girls and coaching guys. How did you have to kind of adjust your approach to coaching these guys as the head coach? I know you've been an assistant, but you're putting on the headset as the main guy. How did you have to change how you deal with them as guys? Um, to be honest, I'm pretty hard on those girls, uh, and they have they have loved every bit of I've I've expect a lot you know but I we don't yell at them and we don't you know none of the stuff that used to be back in the 80s and 70s but we we push them to get better every day uh, and it's being about you know what we expect out of them is in you know this is one of our sayings this year and it came from Zach Lester we are chasing perfection along the way let's get some get some excellence and that's what our what's what our mindset's been we try to be perfect every single play practice. You know, forget not forgetting your practice jersey, making sure we pick up garbage, all those stuff that you talk about. Um, so the mindset really hasn't changed. I don't treat these guys any differently. Uh, the girls might say I treat these guys less harsh than I, I've treated them in the past couple of years. So He's going soft on the guys. I'm going soft on the guys. <laughs> okay, we've talked about the shortened season a lot in these first three mm-hmm. weeks and, and how big every regular season game is. How big was this win tonight to get that second win in three weeks? It's huge. Uh, because yeah, obviously if you look at our record the last three years, it hasn't been good. Um, and beating Highland was was huge for us. They're so much bigger school than us, uh, a lot more athletes than us, and going and getting that victory. Um, and then coming up here, Northmore's you know, been in the playoffs forever, it seems like now in the last three, four, five years, and they've had great player after great player. Uh, this is one that is going to – they're going to remember this. And what I told the guys, I said, you know, Thankfully for us, we broke this field in. Uh, we came here and took the victory, and that's, that's going to be something that Cardington football remembers. Well, something that we talked a lot about during this game is the fact that you have an opportunity now in your first season to really do something special, and they know what that's like here at Northmore. He took a team that was 9-1, and one, they went 8-3. and three. You could replicate that here at Cardington. Well, you're not going to go 8-3. and three. Yep. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's special. But some of the – especially some of the seniors and, and the junior leaders, we're, you know, we're happy we're going to be in the playoffs. But their word was we want to earn it. We don't want to give it to us. We want to earn it. And I told them this is how you earn it. 
you beat these teams like this and we're going to be you know whenever the points come out which we're not counting this year but we're going to be near the top of whatever our region is because we're beating teams that are a lot bigger than us and you know we're going to earn our spot and then we're going to go do something with it you threw the ball 46 times last week maybe some of that was because you got behind and but it looked like you tried to be a little bit more balanced this week yeah it last week it seemed like every big running play was a holding call uh so it was kind of like you know we're getting 10 yards but we're losing 10 and it's first and 20 now so we know big number 11 can go up and get the ball. Uh, and if you saw any of those highlights from last week, he's, he's an all-state kid. Um, so we went down and, hey, throw it up to him. Uh, let him make some plays. He made some plays tonight, uh, you guys saw. Um, but, you know, we want to be balanced. We got great running backs. Uh, the Plowman boys, uh, Joe Denny, you know, touching that ball. Zach Lester has great hands. You didn't see Gabe McConnell a lot, but he's got great hands. Uh, so we've got a lot of weapons to spread it around with. Congratulations, Coach. That's a big win. Congratulations and good luck next week. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. The head coach from Cardington after a big 20-12 to 12 vin, uh, win over Northmore. And he came in here, and, and you can just tell by talking to him the, the attitude and the confidence that he has, and that obviously has spread to his football team. Yeah, it's contagious. It'll grow. You know, enthusiasm, being positive, working your team up, building on what you have and not trying to make something happen. And they made it go tonight. Well, we talked about getting more balance. And you take a look at the final numbers. They had 178 yards rushing and only 142 yards passing. And I think any head coach would love to have that kind of balance, especially when you had to throw the ball so much last week. And, you know, everybody came in thinking, hey, they're going to throw the ball over the field. But they did a great job of mixing it up. And when you have speed in your backfield, oh, boy, does that make it tough for defenses. Well, our player of the game is really a no-brainer. Nate Hickman, the junior quarterback, came in here and led this team not just by throwing the ball, but he had some you know big runs in there as well. 14 of 17, very efficient, 142 yards passing. He had the one touchdown pass. He also had 12 carries for 28 yards, so he was a guy who really had his fingerprints on this game plan all night long, and he cut down on a lot of the big mistakes, especially in the second half. How many teams will take your quarterback on short yardage and turn him into a fullback? I did that. They did that over and over on their one touchdown drive. They did it. Every time they had fourth and one or two, what do they do? They go toe-to-toe on the line, put two backs behind him, one behind him, and they just push him for a first down. And that's body and heart. That's putting you know your best athletes in the position to win. With the win, Carnington is now 2-1. and one. They're 2-1 and one in the KMAC, and Northmore drops to 1-2. and two. They are 0-2 oh in conference play. The final score tonight, Cardington 20 and Northmore 12. Our thanks to tonight's broadcast team, our producer, an outstanding job by Adam Thompson and the outstanding camera work as well from Ramos Yoskouris and Nick Jacobs. But most of all, our thanks to you for joining us. Once again, the final score, Cardington 20 and Northmore 12. You've been watching high school football live and free on the OH Report, powered by BS Media Productions. Thanks again to our generous sponsors for making this all possible. Keep it locked into the OH Report, your new home for live sports coverage in North Central Ohio and beyond. For Bruce Weirich, I'm Brian Harder. So long from Northmore. Wanted to go outside a hole across the 50-yard line. And he's gonna go into the end zone the first play of the game, 53 yards! And Northmore is out of it. Throws to his right, he's got some time, he looks, gets caught, and a first down for Cunnington up to the 45 yard line. First for seven, it's Zach Wester. Lester across midfield, still on his feet, finally brought down. Stay on the ground. Grab the ball on the spinning by Gavin White and ball on the ground, and Northmore with the turnover.